do 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 phenomena do 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 phenomena do 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 This is Heckle Vish at the Pork Shop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. It's like I told my last wife. I says, honey, I never drive faster than I can see. Besides that, it's all in the reflexes. You just listen to the Pork Shop Express and take his advice on a dark and stormy night, all right? When some wild-eyed, eight-foot-tall maniac grabs your neck, taps the back of your favorite head up against the barroom wall, and he looks you crooked in the eye, and he asks you if you paid your dues, well, you just stare that big sucker back in the eye and remember what old Hecklefish always says at a time like that. Have you paid your dues, fish? Yes, sir, the check is in the mail. Well, you see, I'm not saying that I've been everywhere and I've done everything. But I do know it's a pretty amazing planet we live on here. And a man would have to be some kind of fool to think we're all alone in this universe. The idea of the fake moon landing conspiracy really took off in the 1970s. Now the 70s had the best movies, the best music. Uh, you got a nice beaver, nice beaver. You know how to do it. Do, do, de, do, do. Give me that nice beaver, nice beaver. You know how to show it. What are you doing? Yeah, that song's going to be stuck in my head all day now. Oh, you don't remember that one, buddy? Bee Gees, nice beaver. Night fever. No, night fever. That doesn't even make any sense. Well, what does he have, the flu? It's nice beaver. It's not. Well, if you spent as much time at Club 54 as I did, you know that nice beaver makes way more sense. Oh, uh, that may be, but the song is Night Fever. Eh, agree to disagree. The rapture is happening. And for those who don't know, the rapture a is... A great song by Blondie. No. And out comes a man from Oz, and he tried to run, but he's got a gun, and he shoots you dead, and he eats your head. And then you're in a man from Oz, you go out at night, eating cars, you eat Cadillacs, Lincolns too, Mercury's and Subaru's, and you don't stop. Stop. And you don't stop. Stop. Okay, okay, sheesh, what a grouch. This one goes out to the first fish in space. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown engines on. Check ignition and may God's love be with you. <laughs> Here we go, baby! To the moon! It's ground control to Major Tom. You've really made the grade. And the papers want to know whose shirt you wear. Now it's time to leave the capsule if you dare. This is Major Tom, the ground control. I'm stepping through the door 
and I'm floating in the most peculiar way. And the stars look very different today. For here am I sitting in a tin can. Far above the world. Planet Earth is blue and there's nothing I can do. Do, 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 but you do, do, be, do, 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 Scenario 51, a secret code inside the Bible said I was. I love my UFOs and paranormal fun, as well as music, so I'm singing like I should. But then another conspiracy theory becomes the truth, my friends, and it never ends. No, it never ends. I feel the crap cat and got stuck inside Mel's home with MK Ultra. I feel only too aware. Did Stanley Kubrick face the moon landing alone on a film set with the shadow people there? The Roswell aliens just fought the smiling man, I'm told. And his name was called But I can't believe I'm dancing with the bitches Had no fish on Thursday nights with they chase you And the Wi-Fi's helping me all through the night All I ever wanted was to just hear the truth So the Wi-Fi's helping me all through the night The Mothman sightings and the solar storm still come to a god, the secret city underground. Mysterious number stations, planet circle to Project Stargate, and what the dark watchers found. Within a simulation, don't you worry, though. The Black Knight satellite and told me so. I can't believe I'm dancing with the fish. Head of fish on Thursday nights with they chase you. And the Wi-Fi is helping me all through the night. All I ever wanted was to just hear the truth. So the Wi-Fi is helping me all through the night. Security loves to dance on the dance floor because she is a camel. And camels love to dance when the feeling is right on Wednesday time. Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. This is not 
a professional production. We don't know why anyone watches this thing, but we're glad you do. And now, to kick off the show is everyone's favorite sidekick, the one, the only, Hecklefish. That looks good. This this is making sound. Thumbs up from down below. Uh, who's putting comments up during the show intro? It's, it's got to be Victoria. It's Victoria. She's got a guilty look on her face. How are we doing tonight? It's good to have the After Files back. I feel like I haven't been here in a while. But we did do a Saturday watch along. I hope you guys were able to check that out. There was a lot of fun. We just ran a poll of what videos to watch, and we just watched videos for a few hours. It was a lot of fun. Who's here in the chat? Space Matt Spliff says we're sounding good. That's good to hear. Crispy Priest, thumbs up. Hey, April, May, June. Good to see you. Boy, and this is slow mode is on the chat, huh? Ashley, you missed it. What did you miss? Uh, you, you want me to start over? I'll start over. Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. No, nah, I'm just kidding, of course. That guy's me. Um, like the show. I'm glad you did. That was a stressful episode. That was a stressful episode to work on. And, and editing that, the tick scene, I was itchy the whole time. And it was sad to see some people in the premiere chat talking about themselves or loved ones with Lyme disease. I didn't get into it too much in the episode because I, I felt like I, are, I kind of hit it pretty hard. But I'm 80% sure that uh, Lyme disease was a, a government experiment gone wrong. Now it affects 500, four or 500,000 people a year. And 20% of them or so get chronic Lyme, which is, it's a rough disease to have. And did you realize all the security issues at the CDC? I, I ran out of time to go through them. Just Google CDC security issue or, sec or CDC safety problem. It's, it's, it's stressful and, and a little disappointing. So, uh, so when they tell us that leaks aren't possible, uh, they happen all the time. And, uh, and, and the, uh, the facility in, in Manhattan, Kansas, Manhattan, Kansas, is, is open. It's now open. Tracy, why can they not eradicate the ticks? They're really hard to kill. They're resistant to everything. And like I mentioned in the episode, they can... They can survive underwater for a length of time. They could be frozen and reanimated. They're really hard to kill. And um, the flesh-eating virus, um, the flesh-eating bacteria, oh my God. That's a rare flesh-eating bacteria that now is happening a lot. Google that as well. Google flesh-eating bacteria. Google it right now. And look how many hits you get. It's, if it's so rare, I don't know why I've got 15 pages of Google results. I mean... There was this woman, uh, 40 years old, like mother of two or something, goes swimming in, in a lake, as we do, contracted the Aramona hydrophila, and within two days, they had to take her legs. And I'm not even sure if they're going to be able to keep her arms. Good to see you, Eric V. Jason Thompson, yeah, it was scary. Very scary. CJ, TJ, no thanks. Brain-eating amoeba. I think that's, I think that's spongiform. I think that's a virus, right? Uh, Ryan James, I lived in Georgia when that girl got the flesh-eating bacteria. It was big news and super scary. Yeah, they didn't think she was going to make it. So, I mean, she cut her leg. But she was in the in cut her leg and, and the bacteria got in through the water. And it's not like, oh, it has to be dirty water. 
It just has to be fresh water. If it's, if it's on the warmer side, that's better. This bacteria likes it warmer. Salt water, not an issue, but in standing warm water, it's a problem. Lakes, rivers. I, if you Google it, you'll see there's CDC warnings telling people here's what to look out for. You know, if you don't have to swim in lakes, don't. I mean, it's crazy. But yeah, she just cut her leg and got stitches. Okay, fine. And then over the next two days, she's complaining to her boyfriend that she just doesn't feel well. Like, I just don't feel well. And then excruciating pain, you know, starting with her leg that she, that she couldn't understand. So they took her for an MRI. They didn't understand and then finally, one of the doctors figured it out and they went, oh no, we got we to gotta go fast. So they explained to her what's going on and uh, here's what you have and, he, and we're going to do everything we can. They weren't even sure she was going to make it. She goes under for surgery and she wakes up and she, her leg is gone. And well, did you, you, my leg is gone. Did you get everything? Mm -mm. We got to keep going. Well, what's next? Hands, foot. And then finally they got it. Crazy. So sad. And if you look into her, she's unbelievable. I, her positivity is uh, like it was, it, it, she's so positive about it that it's confusing. Like cause, uh, when I'm researching her, I see her like on a, I don't know, a morning show or something telling her story. And, she, you know, she's dressed up. She's in a good mood. The studio audience loves her. So it's like, okay, she's on TV. She's having fun. You know, this is a year later. But I look at, at pictures of her coming out of surgery with limbs missing and she's thumbs up, she's smiling, she's hugging everybody. I can't, to have that kind of attitude, that's how she made it because I'm not wired that way. I'd be like, you got to do what? Hey, James Reese, South Carolina. I was already afraid of ticks before the episode. Yeah, someone was, was saying, well, we usually watch the Waffle Files during dinner, but tonight was a mistake. I can't digest meat. Let's blame the ticks. Not yeah. Someone in the in the premiere chat said something that was kind of scary, and I don't think they're right, but it was kind of scary. They said uh, they're using bugs to make us stop eating meat, so we can start eating the bugs. A, a WEF program. I was like, I don't think that's right, but that's that's scary that that's even a an option because I was thinking, oh, that. That would solve that problem if everyone's just allergic to it. And hundreds of thousands of people are just getting meat allergies. Jason Spurlock, AJ, who's to blame for creating bed bugs? I don't know about that one, man. I didn't find any secret CIA bed bug stories, but if I find them, I'll let you know. It's a lot of ticks and mosquitoes. And uh, there wasn't enough time to go into all of it. I saw people in the chat were saying, talk about the the Japanese during World War II, the, the chemical warfare that they engaged in. There just wasn't enough time, and I wanted to keep it kind of focused on us because that's our favorite subject, right? But uh, the Japanese were brutal, brutal to mostly the Chinese, killed millions of people uh, with chemicals. Anthony Goodley, that is right. WEF has an agenda of putting bugs in food. Yeah, and I think, I, did I mention this to you guys uh, last time we did this? But I just, I was at, filling up the car in the gas station. I run inside for whatever, I forget. And you know, on the counter, there's usually uh, snacks and five-hour energy drinks, the typical stuff that's on the counter at the gas station. This place had crickets, grasshoppers, um, mealworms, which basically like giant dried out maggots. I couldn't believe it. And that's the first time I've seen that. And, you know, if you're not paying attention, maybe it's just weird or gross or novelty, but I'm aware about the, about how they want us to eat insects. So that's what I was thinking. Like, this is how it starts. You know, put it in the gas station. You get some, get a couple of frat guys to eat it as a goof. And next thing you know, they're like, oh, you know, dried grasshoppers are not that bad. Then we have to eat the bugs and then we won't own anything and we'll like it. Team November sounds like the South to me. Now this was in Vegas. Ranch flavored crickets are tasty. The thing is, I'm not against. I mean, it's it's gross, but if I, I feel like I can get past it, certain bugs I can do it. But what bothers me is the, uh, you know, is the one world government aspect to it. 
because I, I totally believe that. And I'm surprised that we don't have any kind, we don't have a context warning on the video yet. I uploaded it last night as early as I could to give the algorithm time to explore it, to make sure I was super careful to not, I didn't mention Wuhan once. I, I never put the words lab and leak together in the same sentence. I just, I would be super careful. But I think it was an important episode. That's certainly not one of our more fun ones, but I think it was important. And, and it, if you're new here, that's something that we do from time to time. We mostly tell the weird stories, the urban legends, the myths. But sometimes I just need to talk about something important. But the way I got you into it was with that monster, the Montauk monster. That's how I got you into it. And with the creepy thumbnail, which is a screenshot from Splice. Pulled, I got you in with the Montauk monster, but then, then I had a message for you. But I, that, that 40, 44,000 people watched the premiere. That's pretty good. And a couple of people asked, the Montauk monster was never officially identified, but people are pretty sure it was a raccoon. <laughs> Lord definitely pulled me in, LMAO. Near dusk, thanks for dropping the plugs. Hit that like button. It does help. Eric Sparks liked the episode. I appreciate that. Thanks, David Wills. Willis. No thought on fire. That's no moon. Craig Miller, I kept waiting for the debunk, debunk segment. Never wanted that one so badly. You and me both, brother. But no. Elaine, raccoons have beaks? No, they don't. It's just the way that the skull, the skull looked. And look, I don't see a raccoon when I see, when I see that. But on, on the other side of the Montauk monster, there are photos of that side, which you don't see that much. You see the ones that I showed. Those are the common ones. But on the other side, you can see that there's a little fur left. And it's that black, white, gray stripe from a raccoon. The claws are definitely the same. And someone overlaid a raccoon like drawing on top of the skeleton to see how it would match and it matches perfectly. So people are pretty sure that's what it was. And it just got super bloated from water or whatever. I, that rat in the bodega, that, that, that might've been the biggest rat I've ever seen. Shout out to Gino for finding that one. I thought I saw big rats in New York city, but that was, that was crazy. It was so fat. Like it couldn't even really run. Just waddling around the bodega. Captain CB, thanks for the nightmares tonight. Yeah, sorry about that. Jason King, is anyone else using the CIA gateway tapes? Are you using those, Jason? Did you get, did you get those to work? The gateway project? Let me know if you got that to work. <laughs> Gigi Goldman, Bill Gates, yeah, with the, with the mosquitoes. Raccoon parrot like the crab cat. Rodents of unusual size, the RUSs. Robert Lukowski looking for Space Panda. He might come back soon. Uh, next week, we're, it's going to be a little bit more upbeat. We're going to cover uh, Gobekli Tepe and some of those ancient sites and uh, possible proof of ancient advanced civilizations. Big archaeology is not going to like this episode. They're not, uh, we'll probably get a context warning as well because everybody knows that the Sumerians were first and everybody knows that the pyramids are only 5,000 years old and everybody knows that Gobekli Tepe was just a random church in the middle of the desert and no one lived there. At, right. I don't believe any of that stuff. Big arc, Jake, big arc. A bong bonger zone, a bonger zone is looking forward to that. Good, I'm glad. Mike D, that'll be a good episode. It's going to be a long one. That might be an hour. That one might go an hour. May have to cut it. Judith Donnelly likes The Office. I'm glad you think so. I, I'm With all the streams, I'm trying to do a quick tour before I start, just so you guys can see the progress. And I think it's fun to let you see what's going on here because it makes makes you feel like you're more part of things. Just Because th those videos that I do, they're from today. Like that, I shot that a couple hours ago. Uh, Serenity, they found a Tepe older than Gobekli. They did, and uh, I'll be covering those. I think that's a Karahan, if that's how you say it, Tepe. Then there's Bankuku Tarla, which is even older. And what's interesting about a couple of those sites is they were constructed 
before the great flood of the Younger Dryas, during and after. So we're going to get into how they possibly could have done that, you know, and what, what that could have been like. Because uh, it, it, it's the scientists who were in the Younger Dryas theory believe that it happened in, in a week, that the ice caps melted in a week. That's insane. Can you imagine what it was like to be a person and see that? Spring Hollow, Bright Inside is looking into ancient history. That's, uh, that's Jimmy Corsetti's uh, site. Jimmy's a good guy. Definitely check him out. But I'm, su I'm sure a lot of you guys follow Jimmy. He's a cool dude. And he's, he, always, he always speaks very kindly about the Y Files. DD says Space Panda is lame. Well, Space Panda said you're lame. So what do you think about that, DD? See? Doesn't feel so good, does it? Jake, I think the big flood outbreak happened in a week. Yeah, I think so too. Tessa Graham Hancock will be proud to watch next week's episode. I should hope so. He contributed to it. Nero says Jimmy's awesome. Yeah, he's good. Matt Dolnak asking if I like Graham Han Hancock. I'm a huge fan. I have been a fan of his forever. He's the one of the first, probably the first person who got me thinking about that stuff. You know, it's his because he showed up on shows like Art Bell, and his book was in that in the scene. You know, Fingerprints of the Gods was not a mainstream book. It was just so you only got exposed to Graham if you were in that scene of the alternate history guys. You know, the pseudo archaeologists, as they make as as the mainstream calls them. So, so I got exposed to to his his uh, his work through the weird stories, through the weird group. And then as I'm reading it, I'm going, oh, this guy, this is not like a weird, this is, this guy's a legitimate um, a journalist, which everyone just wants to call Graham Hancock a pseudo archeologist, but he's a legitimate journalist. He, he was a, a field reporter for The Economist before he got into archeology. span I mean, that's, that's a super high-end gig that he had. J Dog, what about Randall Carlson? Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of Randall too. I and I think he's really entertaining, but he's newer on the scene. You know, John Anthony West, a little newer on the scene. I, West was around for a long time, but I, when when the scene started to form, he came a little later. Yeah, so reading Grant Hancock's book, I put that down. I was like, oh, this this is this might be real. This was not a story. This might have really happened. Serenity problem with Graham Hancock is no evidence. Well, there's a lot of evidence, but there's no proof, and those things are different. But the, but the problem with big archaeology and mainstream that say, you know, Gobekli Tepe was this or that, they don't have evidence either. So, so we we nobody knows. So I agree that there's that there's no proof, but in Gobekli and Bankuklu and the other other mounds over there, I mean, they're, they're finding stuff all the time still. So are they proof of something? No. But is it evidence? Absolutely. Starship can't forget about Robert Schock. He's, he's great. He was, uh, the first time I started thinking about the Sphinx was, was through Schock's work. He might've been the first one to, to point to the fact that, that the Sphinx has water erosion around its base. That's amazing. I, and, you know, mainstream still hates that. They still say no. Like, but you look at it, it's, it's obvious. But, you know, is that proof or is that evidence? It's evidence. It's not proof. It's evidence, but it's pretty strong evidence. America Before is a great read. I need to check that out. I haven't gotten to that one yet. Zeb Francis just saying Sphinxster just randomly. But that's, you know, that's, that's how Zeb does it. He, he likes anal jokes. That's fine. Uh, all, that's welcome here. Don, Don M., they claim it's wind erosion. Har, har. Don and I don't buy that. Not for one minute. Matt says Milo debunked the crap out of Graham's stuff. Not completely. There's, I mean, there's certainly counter arguments. 
But you know what's 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 annoying about the counter arguments is that Graham Hancock is dismiss, dismissed as pseudo archaeology, pseudoscience, and that's that. And the mainstream is correct. When why can't if there's no proof of either, then we need to have the conversation of all theories, unless you can prove that the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids, which you can't. And you can prove that they were used as tombs for kings, which you can't. You can't prove that. No mummies ever no, been found in a pyramid. Nothing's been found in them. The only thing found in the pyramids are evidence that they possibly were power plants. There's evidence of that. Yeah, Mel, they can't prove it. But, but, that's, the, that, but that's, that's the settled science to them. Ancient Egyptians built the pyramids 5,000 years ago, and they, those were used as tombs for kings. And that's that. And any other idea, any other theory is pseudoscientific, it's wacky, it's a conspiracy theory. Okay, well, prove that the ancient Egyptians built it. Well, my proof is they're, they're Egypt's right here. It's Egypt's right here. Of course, Egyptians built. I'm not, so Egyptians built the pyramids right. Maybe they built it 10,000 years earlier. No, they didn't do that. Well, pro then prove your story. Why am I the wacky one? Prove your story. They won't do that. No soot on the ceiling, says Muna. That's not true. In the, uh, in the king's chamber, in the Great Pyramid, there is evidence of burning on the, on the ceilings of one of the entrances. Prove they didn't, Mr. Boo Boo. That's right. Teresa, the Egyptians say they didn't build the pyramids. That's interesting. All right, where are we? We're a half hour in. So coming up, coming, oh no, we're, I guess we're 20 minutes in. Coming up tonight, we've got a couple of weird videos, a couple of UAP sightings that were together, kind of fun, and they're from the last couple of weeks. They're short videos. Of course, we've got a Gino story hour coming up. And uh, I know the story he's going to tell. It's a good one. It's a fun one. So that's coming up. And also, I, we've got um, a like a 30-minute video. I'm not going to play it all the way through. We'll, we'll, we'll pause it here and there. We'll talk about it. Of all the evidence of NASA lying like through the years, like the time that, that uh, George Bush was like given a, given a tour of NASA, and there you see on the screen the astronaut on the, on the blue screen. NASA says that's not a blue screen. That's just what we use to measure. Uh, okay, well, we're going to look at a lot of that stuff. We're going to look at where they're wearing harnesses. We're going to look at the times where everyone in NASA said, you know, we're building this so we can finally leave near Earth orbit and explore the solar system. We can go to far places that we've never thought of, like the moon. We can finally go to the moon. Um, we'll hear someone from NASA talk about how they they don't even have they don't have the data, the telemetry to how to get to the moon. Someone said, well, let's just use the telemetry and the science to get to the moon. And he's like, well, we don't have that. And we don't know how to create it. You don't have it? Well, we have some tapes, but we don't have a we don't have a machine that can read it. So we don't know how to do that. So we don't so the moon. So we're gonna look at a bunch of that stuff. Some of it's you know, I'm half joking, but it's kind of annoying. It's kind of irritating. Morning Star, you've seen those clips. Yeah, they're fun. I've used a few of them uh, in different episodes. You know, remember the one where the where the, the three astronauts are on the space th space station allegedly, and he talks about how he's from he's from Maine, on the other side of the country from where we're filming this, and you see the other astronauts with him. Like, we're not we're in space. We're in space. So that that one's in there. That's a crazy one. Scorpwana, they forgot how to get there. Yeah, they just forgot and they lost the tapes and it, it, we just, I, we don't know. And uh, NASA says, well, we, don't, we don't have the technology to get there and, and the technology that was used, we don't know how to create it. So, Gamer Boys 1980, good to see you. I'm glad you like the videos. Chica Ninja, this is your new favorite channel. I'm glad. Welcome. Evil Dead Ron, NASA's dog ate its telemetry, right? Homework fail, NASA. Runs with trees. Any opinion on Bill Gates and the mosquitoes? I think there's a lot of conspiracy in, into that. 
and I don't buy into a lot of it, to be honest with you. But um, I, I am concerned that the richest people on earth are buying up tons and tons of farmland. That is a concern to me. Like what, why do you need to have access to all the food production in the country, in the world? Why do you, why, why do five, five guys need that? Tamara, Nicole, I love the ads. Great job on all of them. I'm glad. I'm glad that you do. You know, th there are channels that I watch when they, when they, they get it, start their story, right? Today, we're going to talk about this, but first a quick word from our sponsor. And then it's just, ah, uh, they just read the thing. You know, factor meals come every day, every Tuesday, you get a factor meal and it's, you don't have to cook and it's really convenient. It drives me nuts. So I just skip, 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 skip. So I at least want you to see that I'm trying to keep it entertaining and fun and put some effort into the ads, you know, because it's really hard to, to capture people's attention and time and your time's valuable and it should be respected. I guess it's part of what's annoying is with the creators that just, that do the crappy ads. I feel like you don't, you don't respect my time enough to even make me even want to listen to this dude. Rudo Mag, what's up? You rock too. Gino's there. He's hanging out. He's, he's in the bullpen warming up for story hour. Fringe recall, any plans to do an app on simulation theory? Yes. I did one. It's one of my favorite episodes. But uh, yeah, just, just go to the channel and search for simulation. You'll see it. That's a good episode. Ben Tramer, why do these old billionaires even care? They are old. You know that the billionaires are spending billions of dollars on life extension therapy, all kinds of stuff like that. Like they want to live forever, which is fair. You know, if I was a billionaire and old, I'd want to, having a billion dollars sounds fun. I'd want to keep that going a little bit. Tenshu, I have not seen the video of the mouse in space, but I'll check it out if you want to drop a link or email me. As long as the mouse is okay, I don't like when animals get hurt during experiments. You know, I know we have to do it, but it, I, I don't really like watching it. Maybe it makes me soft, but there. But it's even even some of the stuff to watch with Plum Island. I it just I, it bothers me because because I feel like the animals are being abused, and I just I just don't like it. But. I'm the first to admit that I'm a hypocrite because I, I'll look at that and be like, oh, do you know that the, those, those pigs are as smart as dogs. They're sentient and you've got them crammed in the pen. And, and I swear to God, this, I'm not making this up. I'm upset about that during the episode yesterday and I had a delicious carnitas for lunch. It was, it was muy bueno carnitas pork. And it was delicious. And I even was picking it out of my teeth for an hour. It still tasted so good. But I have that separate, I can't be the only one, right? That's like an animal lover but you just make a separation in your mind. Like this is an animal and this is food and they're not the same thing. Like carnitas comes in a box. It comes, just comes in like a bag or it comes ideally in a burrito, but that's not an animal. And that's the same way, me too, with the animal food dilemma. Yeah, steaks, steaks are born in a, in, a, in a plastic wrap. That's how they're born in a plastic wrap. They're not, they don't come off those those cows that are totally aware of what's going on. That hell only eats the mean ones. That's smart. I didn't make that up about the Plum Island thing. That came out of uh, the book Lab, Lab 257. Those guys ate that meat. <laughs> that's, nuts. that's nuts to me. Well, foot and mouth doesn't harm humans. Let's have some steaks. Oh my goodness. I apologize for that. Could you once? I mean... Could you just one time conduct this live stream in a professional manner? No, can't do that. Hanger, hot, mm, bacon. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Chaz Fink, burritos aren't animals. They're not animals. Marquette, that's gross. I know. It really bothered me. We ate the meat. <laughs> that's so metal. Yeah, Irish, I guess so. That's, it's hardcore. I, I don't think I can do it. And be like, you guys go ahead. I brought soup. I brought, I have soup from home. You guys, you enjoy. I good. I good. Just got some soup. <laughs> Tainted meat, says Brian. I remember that. 
That Walking Dead episode, that was crazy. Tainted meat. Kevin Farmer, born with incisors, meat eat meat. Yeah, I do too. I, I, was, I was vegetarian for like half a summer, right? And mostly because it was cool. Because I was, I was young, you know, maybe I was 22 years old and it was cool. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I liked a girl who, who was into it. I don't know. It was stupid. It was, so it was half a summer and, uh, and I go over to my dad's house who, who knows that I'm doing this. He's like, hey, Andrew, right, we're going to put some steaks on the grill. I know you can't eat it, but we'll have some steaks. We got a salad for you. Well, we got some steaks. And that was it. That was, that was the last vegetarian. The steaks, when dad put steaks on the grill... It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your politics are if Dad's cooking up steaks in the grill. Soap Dodger. I was trying, but if I recall, it probably did not work. Oh, you. The chat is. Chat has got some weird, weird food suggestions. I can't eat a lot of that stuff. A Buckeye soldier, three million by the end of October, guaranteed. Do you guarantee it? That would be nice. Look, the, the, we've got a lot of subscribers. It's fun to look at, but it's, it's definitely slowing down for, for months. And I'm not complaining about it. I'm not, you know, 100,000 subs a month is still crazy. It's still bonkers. But it's not like, you know, six, seven months ago where we we're pulling down 200, 300 a month. That was crazy. Liz Brower says, yes, 3 million. That would be cool. That'll be fun. It's just number. Isn't it just a number at this point? At least it was to me. Once there's a million folks watching, that's in my mind. That's crazy. A, a lot. For, after that, it's just numbers. Colliver, I wish AJ would turn the heckle toy around so we could see the face. Yeah. So he's coming. He's he's called a dangler, and I got him stuck on the cord. I think he's stuck. Yeah, he's, oh, there he goes. And now I cut my thumb. Yeah, he's called a dangler. When I was a kid, we called those keychains. Come on, focus. There he is. He's going to be fun. I, I still squeeze him and I want him to talk like the plushie. He's going to be fun. We're going to keep the prices low on that, I promise. I don't care what, the, what our March partner says. You guys down there know I don't care what our merch partner says about anything, right? Yeah, they don't. <laughs> they know. They're rolling their eyes. Uh, we got to get this. It can't be, the plushie can't be more than 30 bucks. Eh, you know, $30. That's, but it, it, but it talk. Listen, I'm, I'm going to say it for the last time. It's $30. I don't think we could do it. All right, then we won't do it. Well, we could maybe find a different, uh, that's what I'm talking There you go. Right? Money talks. One of mine, one is the loneliest number. I guess so. It's the loneliest number I ever knew. Jeep show Jennifer. I we that's this that's not the part of the show. Jennifer comes in later. This is we recap the episode. We say hi there to everyone. I try to tell you what's coming up. Then after that, we get to some super chats. And then we bring on the team. Starship, they're called danglers now. LOL. I didn't know that. I, because Jen had it. I was like, oh, that's a cool keychain. We'll sell a bunch of those. She's like, it's a dangler. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. It's a dangler. Prima one, AJ, are you the voice of Hecklefish? Do I sound like him? I don't sound anything like him. He does his own voice. Who does your voice? Jacob W., clever use of psychology. Kind of is. I ain't smart, but I ain't stupid. Uh, Elijah, yes, we can get Jen to talk to you about the Van Allen belts tonight. That's not a problem. She she can explain how we got through them. Colin, Dangler doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, it makes me think of other stuff. Yeah, I hate dangling too. But, you know, when you get old, gravity becomes your enemy. Death shock isn't AJ and Mensa. I don't know how you would know that because I never talk about that. But I am, but I never talk about that. Feels weird to, it feels weird to say it. 
Who wants to hang out with that guy? Like if you're, if you're like, you guys know, because I know who watches the show, smart people watch the show and weird people, weird, smart people, but you're like me. Smart people never say that they're smart. <laughs> they you don't have to say that. You know, if, if you're at a party, everybody knows who the smartest one is and everyone knows who the dumbest one is and the most fun one. Usually all different people. Rob Gable, keychain. I think so too. Mischief says I said it on Rogan that I was probably extra insecure when I was on when I was on Rogan. Because look, it's intimidating. That's scary. Bernie, too many murderers in Mensa. I never heard that. He was a quiet man. He was good to his neighbors. He always said hello. He had a garden. He was in Mensa. He he tutored my daughter in math, and then. He tore off her skin and made a suit. And we found her organs in the basement. Anne says all AJs are smart. Obviously, her, her initials are AJ. That's how she did that. See how clever she is? Mark ain't none too smart. That's right. It's better, it's better to be good looking. Let's see what's going on in the super chats. Is that hecklefish distracting? Is, he t- is it too much? Should I, should I move him back? I'm, just, I'm getting him right in my face. Don't subscribe. We please need a Bigfoot episode. I would love to not do one. Don't. I would love to not do a Bigfoot episode. I don't like cryptids. Christina Hinks was invited to join Mensa. Christina Hinks is a name that just feels good in the mouth. I didn't know they invited people. I applied. It, I think I forget, it was a while. It's been a bit, but I think I, you take like a, a test to see if you can go take the test. It was something like that. And during the test, I'll tell I'll tell a quick story. During the test, so it, the test is uh, it's hard. Obviously, I took it at Caltech with I don't know a bunch of other people in the room, maybe twenty five of us, thirty of us in the room. And it's just like any, like when you took your SATs or whatever, it's the same thing. Everyone tests, pencils down. Here's the timer. The, there's a proctor at front. Is it, it's called a proctor. Uh, or is that the guy who checks your anus? We have to ask Zeb. He's our official anus expert. No, so there's a proctor up front and, you know, pens down. Blah, blah, blah. So we have uh, whatever, an hour, two hours to do the first part of the test. There's a few sections. So I do it. I ace it. I blow through the test and people are still working. And I'm done in like, I don't know, 25 minutes. I mean, I blew through this. I couldn't, I, like Mensa, Mensa is for chumps. This is super easy. So I put my pencil down and the, now the proctor's walking around and he's looking at everybody, just, you know, checking around. And he looks at me and I'm sitting there ca- kind of cocky. And he says, um, you know that the, that page is perforated. Uh, what? He's like, yeah, page is perforated. So I unperforate it and it unfolds into like four or five pages. I didn't, I just got started. I just started the test. I had been sitting there for 20 minutes, just cocky. And now I'm up against the clock. And the guy's looking at me like, are you in the right room? You're supposed to be here. I'm like, I promise I, 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 I can be here. But uh, yes, I was able to, I was able to get through it. Army Nation. Loves the Wi-Fi. It's good to see you. Always good to see Army Nation in the chat. Mike D, was Joe Scott in the room? He wasn't. He was not in the room. Um, I, I, I was in California when I took the test. If Joe took his, I would assume that it was in Texas. He, did, he, he sent me a, a DM after last week's, after the uh, Many Worlds Theory episode. He said... Um, Something like you've got you, you you've got the expert spin move or something like that. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I put myself on on Joe's set as what could possibly be an alternate reality, and I knew that I knew that message was coming. Well, like, this is fun. It was just fun. Joe knows I'm a fan. Jimbo isn't Mensa just a yuppie club? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. They do ev- they do events and and meetups. But I don't know if I don't, you know, I don't want to meet norm. I don't like to do meetups with just normal people. I don't want to meet up with a bunch of smart people. 
who like to talk about how smart they are. And then they do events like, like you would expect. Like, oh, we get together and we solve puzzles for, for a whole day. Or we get together and we, we talk about math, unsolvable math problems. Like they really do that stuff. So, so no. That's, I, I, I'm not involved with any of that. I don't even know why I took the test. Maybe it was another thing for a girl. Sean Smith, a bunch of dorks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Greener sounds totally boring. To me, too. Like, I'm looking through the, the pamphlet, like, you know, what to do as a, as a smart person. Like, where's the softball team? You no know, softball team? I'm, I'm, I, I'm a superstar in the Mensa softball team. You throw me a shortstop on that team? They, 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 would, they, they would name the stadium after me. And, and now I'm just stereotyping that they're a bunch of dorks. Who knows? I show up there and they could be all like, you know, it's the, Cal, the Caltech baseball team is there. It's oops. Uh, Jesse Lee, where was Hecklefish born? He was born in the Bronx. Chris Aikens, do a show on dreams. That's coming. Dreams is coming. We're going to do dreams, shared dreaming, uh, lucid dreaming. We're going to wrap that in, uh, in one episode. Frank M., what about a Wi-Fi tour? I would definitely buy tickets. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been asked to do that. I don't know. For now, it's no, but I'm open to it. But there's... Two things. One, uh, one is the easy excuse is that I don't have time for that because I'm always behind with the episodes. So that's the easy excuse. The second, if I'm being honest, the real excuse is I, I would be afraid that nobody would show up and how embarrassing that would be, just how devastating that would be to do all this planning and stuff and promotion for the Wi Files on the road. And maybe, maybe we've got a 400 seat club or something. And then it's like, ah, we, you know, we sold, we sold five tickets. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like that, that, that could happen. JB Maps, do you, uh, do you still live in New York? No, I'm from New York, but I'm in Vegas now. So uh, New York, LA, Arizona, Texas, and now here. Space Matt will walk to Wicon. So if we do, if we do. YCon or you know Y files on the road, we would probably start it here in Vegas because that way, if no one shows up, I could just I could still go. I can go home. You know, I don't have to get on a plane dejected of what a failure I am. I can just I can just go home and be dejected there. You know, what else is new? Frank, come back to Arizona. I liked Arizona. We were in Scottsdale. I liked it there. But. Uh, but Jen got a great job as COO of Explosum, which you guys might know as Cyanide and Happiness, those crazy cartoons, which are all about like fart jokes and stuff. So she got that job when it was in Texas. So we, so that's why we went there. And we were in Texas and I was working remotely as an editor. This is just over a year ago, working remotely. And then the, the, the Wi Files started to be a thing. Kevin Smith, you ain't Mensa. All right, that's cool. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't care whether you think I am or not. I got nothing to prove up here, brother. If you build it, we will come. I hope so. We'll start small. We'll make sure. Kaz freaking loves cyanide and happiness. Yeah, I, I was a fan of theirs for a long time too. And uh, Jen and I got to do some voices in some of the episodes, which I... I wish I could play, but I, I, think, I think we might get a copyright strike if we do that. Because, right, don't they have Super Bam working for them or something like that, Jenny? Yeah, so we don't want to go up against Super Bam because <laughs> that's who we use to, for our copyright strikes. But we did, we did voiceovers because they picked a, a few shorts to do for like Sci-Fi Week. And so we, we dubbed these different shorts in Klingon, in Elvish, in Hatties, like super nerdy stuff. And Jen still knows some, some Klingon. I see you down there, Bakwa. Ah. Yep, she knows Bakwa. Ah. JB Maps, AJ, why wow, you sure have an interesting life? I usually only watch Christian-based YouTube content, 
but I sure enjoy your show. Rock on, brother. Thanks, JB. Yeah, I've done a lot of things. Some stuff I'm proud of, some I'm not. But I've done a lot of things. It's mostly just ADHD and just not, you know, being exceptionally good at, at one thing. So you got to try a lot of stuff. I don't know what Christian YouTube is. Like, to me, that sounds like very one-note content. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I know that I, there's Christian music, that a lot of it is great. Christian movies, a lot of them are great. You know, I'll, I'll do a Kirk Cameron movie. I'll pop a little corn and watch Kirk Cameron. I'm, that's fine. But Christian YouTube, that sounds very like just religious stuff. Is that what that is? Or is it all kinds of stuff? Jack trading YouTube without the fun. That's not nice. I know plenty of religious church going folk who are a lot of fun because Jesus doesn't mind if you haven't drank. He don't mind that one bit. J A W. I mean, I could. It, it warms my heart when I see you type that. From east of the Rockies, you're on the air. Gino, please start a talk show like Art Bell's OG Coast to Coast. It would be epic. Caller, please extinguish your phone. Yeah, maybe we can get Gino to talk about it, but I think he might start a stream or something, maybe on Discord, maybe on Twitch. We'll see what, what he's got cooking. AJ, why name it the Y Files? Just out of curiosity. It just, it, and, and Jen might have, might have come up with the name. I forget. But the Y Files is supposed to be the why files, like why is this the way it is? You know, people who ask why, but also a play on the X files, right? X, Y, and also the T, W, F. When you first look at that, I wanted the logo to make you think of W, T, F. Corey Stillwell, yay, neurodivergent people unite. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a new word, but <laughs> I think that's a pretty new word, but... but uh, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm on the spectrum. I mean, when I asked Jen, I said, when I asked her, I said, you, I'm, I'm on the spectrum a little, right? But I didn't even finish the sentence when she's like, oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah. It's like, okay, well, you, you let me finish asking because that hurt my feelings. Oh, no, 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 you are. Don't even question it. You're, you're, you're well on there. You're firmly on this. Firm. Okay, I got it. That's a Yes. CAJ lateral thinking, says Jack Barnes. Near dusk, we're all on a spectrum. I, I would agree with that. Hecklefish is on the spectrum. He probably is. All right, let's do some super chats, then we can bring the team up. Right? Did I get to these yet? There's Misha, Michelle. Oh, I'm going to, I can't read that. Hang on. There we go. Going to need stronger orange glasses soon. Misha, Michelle, thank you for the 20. Thank you for supporting the show. Thanks for everyone for stopping by tonight and dropping a, uh, a super chat in there. It really helps us. Uh, show hit a little too close to home for me. Greetings from Manhattan, Kansas, current home of the MBAF Labs, a.k.a. Plum Island 2.0. The facilities are literally a 10-minute drive from my home. Oh, what fun. Great show, though. That's scary. Like, I'm sure you're probably fine. But I really meant, you know, whoever represents you in Congress, get to know who that person is. And let them know you want to know what's going on. They're not going to tell you. But remember, I, I worked in, in, with Congress people dealing with constituents. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to talk to you. They don't, really don't want to talk to you. But they, will, that they, but they do listen to you, even if they disagree. Because... We sold our software on incumbency protection. That was, our, that was our phrase. Not how to serve your constituents better, not how to provide a better community, not how to contribute to a more prosperous nation, none of that. This was software to how to keep you in office and keep you reelected. That's, that's, that's what they care about. So even if the, your congressman and congresswoman ignores you, they still listen because they want to keep their job because you know they'll never vote for term limits, right? So as you know, every week there is a, there's a t-shirt that goes with the episode. 
Uh, these are designed by um, SMK, a.k.a. Rob, the official artist of the Wi Files. This is this week's. That's the Plum Island. That's the Montauk Monster. He's got the Wi Files logo on his shoulder there. Hey, he's got a barcode. Building 257 to the left. Yeah, Rob gets a lot of details in there. So that's at shop.thewildfiles.com. It's a great way to support the channel. You know, it, rather than, you know, throw a super chat in there. You can grab some merch. I think you can, you can still get the Hecklefish plushies on there too. And the best way to support is through Patreon. Become a Patreon member. That's, you get all kinds of perks. Like if you like the After Files, like here's the thing. People like the After Files, but they complain that the chat moves too fast. They complain that I don't read the, all their super chats. And I get it. The chat moves too fast for me. I can't get to all the super chats. I get it. But Patreon members get two private live streams a week. And there's no, no issue with, I mean, everyone can talk. And your cameras are on. So that's twice a week. Those are Thursday nights before the premiere. And then tomorrow morning, Friday morning, we do another Patreon chat. Small town girl, always good to see you. Do you have a specific episode coming up for Halloween? No, we don't do, um, we don't do, you know, holiday episodes because I don't want to, I, I want people to be able to watch. It's evergreen is what we do here. So you can watch e episodes anytime. But we talked about maybe you know, doing an after in costume or something like that. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. But Jen would do it. And the Patreon members seem to like the idea. So I'll do it. I don't want to, but I'll do it. All right. So that's that plug. Shopped at thewildfiles.com. That's done. That's done. Um, and then Patreon member, two live streams. You get early access to the videos without commercials, including the, the ads, which I think are funny, but, but those are not in there. So no commercials, no ad sense, none of that stuff. Um, and also, if you're a Patreon member, you, these specialty T-shirts, they drop off the store. But if you're a Patreon member, that you Patreon members have their own exclusive section of the store. We can, they can get all, the, all that old stuff. John Rhodes, Knights Templar for Friday the 13th. That's a nice connection. I like what you did there. Um, Knights Templar episode is coming up, coming up shortly, right? Let me look at the producers. That's, that's soon, right? Yes, they're nodding. Johnny Scythe, giveaway time, not just yet. I'm watching the clock. We're almost there. Billy B, why doesn't Hecklefish ever appear in After Files Live? It's always pre-recorded videos. What are you trying to hide? Uh, is anybody getting this? I, I, I don't know, Billy. I can ask him. For our drums, longtime supporter, very reliable. Thank you for the Rendlesham UFO episode last week. Enjoyed the Air Force stuff in it. Brings me back to my Air Force Academy where I learned my parachutist wings. No UFOs, no UFOs there, not there anyway. Well, you're welcome for our drums. Congrats on earning your wings. That's, that's, uh, how was, how, how was that? The, how was that the first time? I mean, you got to do it. It's like, it, even if you're scared, it's like, you can't show fear. You could say it on the plane. You could be like, hey guys, this, I don't really want to do this. And they'll say, I don't want to do it either, but you got to do it. And I wonder what that's like. Daniel Boner, Bonner, Boner, have you ever had a dream in which you were using your phone? It's almost unheard of, even though we use them in the waking world quite frequently. A bit odd, no? Also, can dogs get, uh, I think that's tuberculosis. Uh, I'm not a vet, so I don't know. I would, that's a, that's a lung infection. So maybe. But what intrigues me is the first part of your comment. Uh, Jen's waving. Hi, I see you. Yeah, you'll be up soon. No, I know. Uh, what intrigues me is the first part of your comment is, no, I'm never using my phone in a dream. I never thought of that. Can you guys tell me in the chat? Oh, tuberculosis. Hey, yo! That's why Jen was getting excited because she loves a pun. So I dislike puns so much, I, I, they don't even register. Arrow Moro can't read text in a dream. That's true. And if you've ever gotten into lucid dreaming, which... Everyone should try because when you get it to work, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. 
it's hard to, it's hard to to get it to work. But when you get it to work, it's incredible. But that's something you become very aware of is text just doesn't work. Like you ever use Mid Journey or the AI to have it design something and there's it, a billboard or a sign or a label on a product and it just looks w- like wacky shapes. That's what text looks like in a, when you're lucid dreaming. GPRS asked Jenna, are you sure he's Mensa? <laughs> yeah, she's not sure. She thinks I'm making it up. No name. Everyone should try DMT. Unless you're under 18 and you're in the chat or your kids are watching, they should not try it. But if you're over 18, you should probably try it. You know who should try it is all the leaders of the, of the world, right? Putin, President Zelensky, get everybody to just... Take a 15-minute DMT trip. Or just do some shrooms together. Be a better world. Kevin Kwan, I want to learn how to lucid dream. There's really nothing to it but practice and concentration. Um, so what helped me is getting into meditation, which I don't do, I don't do anymore, but I used to do a lot. I, I'd love to get back into it, but I, I just it's like I'm too scattered. So Learn to meditate because that just helps you like settle, quiet your mind. And if you're anything like me, that's, that's difficult. But it helps you settle, settle and quiet your mind because you need that. And then as you're falling to sleep, you just talk yourself into it. Tonight, I'm going to gonna lose a dream. Um, mind, it was uh, body asleep, mind awake. Body asleep, mind awake. Tonight, I lose a dream. Tonight, uh, tonight, I'll know I'm dreaming. Tonight, I'll know I'm dreaming. And I just did that over and over and over again. And it got to the point where I was tr- practicing this every night where I can get it to work once a week or so. So uh, eight, whatever that is, 8, 10, 12% of the time, so, which is not very much if you're not into lucid dreaming, I get it. But lucid dreamers would understand that that's what it is. You know, that's, that's the best you're going to do. That's all there is to it, to lucid dream, is to, uh, I'm... I'm dreaming, but I know I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming, but I know I'm dreaming is one of the things I would say. The tricky part of lucid dreaming is staying lucid. It's such a strange feeling because there's that, when you're trying to go lucid, I don't, let me watch the chat. I don't know if anyone's bored by this, but clearly I'm interested in it. So there's an episode coming up. It's the weird part of your letting yourself go to sleep, saying you're going to lucid dream and then there's a chunk of time where there, you really have no consciousness and then you're in the dream. And that chunk of time is when sleep paralysis kind of sets in. And that's a part of the process that you need to learn to control and to not fear because it's pretty, it's pretty scary to be alert for sleep paralysis because we're not meant to be. You know, you ever find yourself falling asleep and you're doing something active in your dream and like your leg jerks or your arm or something. I mean, I almost punched Jen's lights out a week or two ago that's that's your sleep paralysis not not quite taking hold yet but when you're completely aware of sleep paralysis you can you can feel it coming you can hear the sound in your ears and then you can feel your body starting to go limp and then numb and then you have no control over it and since you're awake for this and co- totally aware you f- you freak out it's I, I don't know how else to describe it except whatever drowning might feel like like your whole body starts freaking out you have to get through that and know that this is part of the process. This passes in a second. It's everything's good. I'm in my bed. It's all good. And then whoosh, you're in the dream. And then and you're instantly aware of it. You're just like, Whoa, I'm here. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. But then staying lucid, that's where people, the that's where the really good people, you know, the experts at it really have it down. Because it, it's such a strange feeling when you're lucid, your mind doesn't want you to be. It really, really resists it. It really wants you to go back to dreaming. And there must be some scientific psychological reason for that. Like, you know, maybe we need to dream in order to sort our memories I've heard or organize our experiences or just regenerate or rejuvenate or just, just a way to relax. So maybe your body needs you to do that because you feel it the whole time. This it's just it's like a it's a pulling you back into the dream and you can and you wrestle with it. And there are techniques to stop it from happening. And one of the ones that worked for me is spinning around. Like you just spin around and spin around. Like um, like when you're a kid and you're just spinning around like a nut so you can be dizzy. 
do that in your dream. And that, that keeps me lucid. But some people will do stuff like in the, when they're awake all the time, they'll count the, their fingers on their hands. I've got five fingers. I've got five fingers. And they go about their day in the five fingers. I've got five fingers. They go two hours and they get, and they have a timer. I got five fingers. I got five fingers. And they just start to do these triggers, these keys that, that, that help them know when they're dreaming and when they're awake. Like remember inception, everyone had a, what do they, he had the top and I forget what, what they called those to, totems. Was that what it was? That's like a real thing. You know, you spin the top, and if it keeps spinning, then you're dreaming. If it falls, you're awake. So people are counting their fingers, or they're touching their nose, or they're doing something, so that when you're in the dream, since you're so used to every once an hour saying it, five fingers, five fingers, five, that when you're in your dream, something will be off. You may not have five fingers, or you may not be able to see your hands at all. And then once that happens, then you snap to lucidity. And that's technique. And there's a lot of them. For me, it was spinning around. But I, the most I can stay lucid for is what felt like maybe 10 minutes. You know, and who knows how long that is in real time. It could just be a few seconds. It felt like 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. F flying is like the best thing to do. Just fly around. Not like Rose tries to fly. If I can fly, it's a dream. Silly but true. 100%. Nothing silly when you're dreaming. You know, and that's one of the things to know that you're dreaming. And the flying dream is one that I have a lot. Flying or like, or floating or able to jump really, you know, stay in the air. I also have drowning dreams a lot. Jason Spurlock, AJ should research dream walking. I've been to it. Hemshawn has done lucid dreaming for 40 years. There's better ways. All right. Fire away. People don't dream anymore. I don't know if that's true. Reality checks, says Randy. Yeah, you need something. Breathing underwater, you could definitely do that. You could do anything. Anything you want. Is that Francis astral projection, anyone? I, can, I, I could never get it to work. I'd love to do it, but I can't get it to work. Well, there's the Mr. Wilson. Thank you for this one. Another great episode as always. Knowing what we know, especially from this episode, it's scary to imagine the things we don't. Keep up the great work. Good work. Looking forward to learning more each week. Hagglefish for president. This human right here, this human gets it. Thanks, the Mr. Wilson. Cozy Red Mirrors Part 2. Could be. I'm still waiting for someone to build it. And we'll, we'll live stream it from there. We'll live stream it from the future. There's Patrick Duncan. Good to see you back in the chat. Yes, I could finally upgrade my vodka to Belvedere. No more swimming in the cheap stuff. Another great episode. Got my hecklefish plushie today. Awesome. Had to rescue it from my beagle. Oh, no. By the way, what's up with the new tinfoil hat on hecklefish's bowl? That's a prototype for tinfoil hats that we want to sell. We just can't find a good one. So that's, that's a reject, but it looks good on his bowl, I think. Or Patrick, do you prefer the one that looks like a Hershey's Kiss? We can do that. Chance maybe. I have nothing important to say. Except great show. Here's money and say my name. Chance maybe, chance maybe, chance maybe. Thank you for the 10. I appreciate that. And there's your name. North Rock Mystically. Good to see you in the chat. Just another attempt to support my favorite channel on the YouTubes. Thank you again, Mr. AJ. I never disappoint. I'm so happy to hear that, North Rock. I got into that script nervous. Like, I don't think this is, I don't know if this is why files enough, but I think we found it. Just, yeah, if, if you're not sure if there's a story there, just blame the government for stuff. That, that seems to work. Buzz Dark and there's the Mastiffs. Ticks are the demons of the bug world. Mastiffs hate them. I've had to pick more than a few of them uh, from off my big guys. I despise them. Yeah, I bet. When, when Gino rescued his dog, Karma, we had her for a little while and she had all kinds of bugs on her. All kinds of bugs. No strangers to ticks. I think my mom still has a, a still freaks out about ticks because uh, when I was very little, like I was asleep on her lap or something. She's like just rubbing, rubbing my hair, my ear, whatever, you know, creepy things moms do. And she feels the bumps behind my ear and she didn't know what, what it was. And then she just peels the ear back and there's just 
eight or nine ticks just lined up, just sucking the juice out of my ear. And uh, she freaked out. Uh, Mom and I are not good around bugs. So she freaked out. And I'm not sure what happened after that. Uh, I, I just kind of blacked out. After watching the episode early on Patreon, a big black ant crawled across my arm. Not sure how far I jumped, but it was pretty far. Yeah. I'm not impressive uh, when bugs are around. And of course, the other day, the biggest roach ever is walking across my office carpet. New carpet. And it, this roach was so big, it was like, uh, how big was it? It, it was like, it was walking all, like, almost like a mastiff would walk, like a dog. Like it was, it was waddling because it was huge. Now, I'm from New York. I know of roaches. Um, usually the bigger they are, the better it is. So if you have a giant roach, that's usually an outdoor roach that found its way in. And my office is right near the back door, which is right near the wet driveway, which is right across from the dumpster. So it probably wandered in here, I would, I'm hoping. So big roach is usually an outdoor roach. It's when you get those little, little ones, that's when you've got a problem. When you see those like around the bathroom or the worst in the, in the kitchen, oh my God. We don't want that. Uh, you guys are still getting an exterminator, right? I'm looking down at y'all. Still, get, Someone's going to still spray. I mean, I, I stomped on it, but I don't like to stomp on it the, because the, they cr they're crunch and juicy. And it, it, the first stomp wouldn't take because I stomped on it kind of like a sissy. I was like, eh. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't whack it. I was, uh, uh, uh. I had to pick it up with a paper. I mean, I'm so glad no one was here to watch it. Mark Petri, thank you for the 20. I appreciate that. Digitizer giant rat in video is crazy. Yeah, that was that was a crazy rat. The roach kind of walked like that, just it was so fat that it waddled. Rami Al Jab really wants to know my thoughts on Kabbalah. Um, I'm not I'm not a, a believer. I've covered it a little bit, you know, when I when I've talked about theosophy and Madame Blavatsky and some of those some of those esoteric movements. But uh, you know, I'm not a believer in that stuff. I still find them interesting. I like to expose the scam ones, like the what, what was it the the Knights of the White Brotherhood, which totally sounds like something that should be banned. But they were just that was just their name. Like I, I really like exposing the, those types of groups. Their believers don't like that. I get, I do get hate email, but I don't mind that. You get used to that. Unfortunately, you get used to that. There's Gene the Fourth. Thank you for the five. Did you know? Did you know yesterday was National AJ Day? This was founded by AJ Seafood and Oyster Bay in 2019 for people named AJ. Happy late AJ. Well, thanks, Gene the Fourth. Uh, okay, oyst oysters. Now we got to now we got to talk about oysters. So I love me a raw bar. If, if the restaurant's decent and they got raw, I'm getting raw. I love me a raw bar. Raw oysters, any the big ones, little ones, Eastern, whatever. I love an oyster. I drink the liquor, the whole thing. But in researching this episode and learning about the flesh-eating bacteria, you can get them from oysters. And, uh, and it's super rare that it's going to happen, but it does happen, and... If you're if you're immunocompromised, you're gonna die from it. If you're if you're healthy, which which I am, you probably won't die from it, but you're gonna have a hard month. So now I think I'm off oysters. I think I'm just off them. Like the CDC has warnings about it. Like it doesn't flat out say avoid them, but it says if you're gonna eat oysters, you really should cook them. And it's like, um, so you're saying don't eat raw oysters, eh, you should cook them. So don't eat raw. Just cook them, though. You know, that's, that's kind of what they recommend. But I don't want cooked ones. Christy Cohn, OMG, stop. Not the oysters. No, I know. I, I don't... Every time... I mean, I'm looking at Jenny. Every time Michael's buying dinner, I get oysters, right? Every time. A, a dozen? Yeah, a dozen. Fine. Bring those out. I'll eat those. Cajun boy says New Orleans char grilled oysters. That's different. That's that's fine. Oyster like oyster po, uh, po boy or something. That's fine. I'll eat that. But uh, Carolina gal. Oh, not the oysters. Christy Cone. I'm sorry. They they're 
taking the oysters from us. Jack Trading, never eating an oyster, not starting now. Kevin Kwan, I'm off oysters now, raw at least. I am too. And uh, so that woman from uh, that 40 year old, I think she's from Burbank, California, like lost her legs and stuff. This is from a few days ago. This is not a story like in my research. This is a happen. This just happened a few days ago. She got sick. She ate a, a piece of tilapia that she got from like an outdoor, I think they said it was like the San Jose fish market or something. So this is not, tilapia is not what you would call an exotic fish. And if you eat seafood in a restaurant, you eat a lot of tilapia. Even if they say it's something else, it's a lot of tilapia. And like processed fish, frozen fish, which we eat a lot of that, that's all tilapia stuffed in there because it's cheap and plentiful. You know, I wanted to read the article and be like, oh, she ate some exotic fish from, from the cold waters of Japan and, the, you know, from Nakamuri, whatever fancy thing that the water comes down from the Mount Fuji and it creates this. I wanted that story, but it's like, no, she got tilapia from the market. So now we have a problem. No name. Don't trust the CDC, AJ. I don't. I don't trust them. Brother Daniel, you trust the CDC. I don't trust them. But, I, but those people are getting sick and they're getting sick from, from raw fish and oysters. The duck full of fried oysters are great. Yeah, they are. Rocky Mountain oysters. No, that's all you. Oyster Bar Station Casino Vegas. I don't know what that is, Nat, but that sounds good. So I, so I just ate a tilapia burrito. It's a Saturn Morning Star. You're fine. If it's cooked, you're fine. Uh, you're you're going to be totally fine. You know, suppose you do practice martial art. I do. I practice Kempo. So th the thing is, uh, we eat a lot of seafood. I feel like, you know, like Christy said, Carolina said, they're taking it from us. So yeah, I don't trust the CDC, but people are getting sick. And it's not like, like oysters was always a risk. You can always, it's, it was always a risk, but that's, oyster eaters know that going in. And we kind of wear that as a badge of honor. Like, cause is if you're at a table of five, six, 10 people and you're, an, you're a raw eater, you may be the only one at the table and everyone's just like, ah, I don't know how you can eat that or, you know, but we, we take pride in it. We're like, I eat, I eat, I eat anything. I eat this. Oh, you can get sick. I could get sick. I'll get sick. You know, you get an attitude about it. And I was always like that. Like I might get sick from it, but I'll take the chance. I'll so I'll be, you know, I'll, I have diarrhea for four days and no, no one dies from that anymore. But <laughs> flesh eating bacteria is a whole different thing. That is not di di diarrhea. It's like, it, is eating the oyster worth losing my legs over? I ate Chihuahua. James Fry not had a bad oyster. I haven't either. I've never had a bad one. I've eaten a million of them in my life. I've never had an issue. And I've even eaten a few that you know, you smell it and you're like, oh, I don't, this is a terrible idea to eat it anyway. So I'm a, now you can't risk it. Now I can't risk it. Maybe I'm a coward. Far and wide, oysters are nasty. Yeah, you're the other people at the table, but we want you there. See, you don't understand. You can, when you look at us and say the oysters are nasty, we are proud of that. Like we want you to be annoyed at, we want you to be like, ew, because we want, we want to slurp it. If, <laughs> We want to drink that liquor, drink the juice, slurp in front of you just to see you make the face. I'll order a second round. Like if you're being like very open, how gross, I'll order, bring us six more, bring six more, bigger ones. Set them there. Leroy McCoy, now I want oysters. Me too. Linda C. Leroy, oysters are an aphrodisiac. I think that is an urban legend. I think. Uh... But I mean, from, anecdotally, I've tested the theory and it, I think it works. Jake Best, can you eat a blowfish? Uh, you can eat some of it. But uh, it's supposed to be delicious, but it's got to be prepared the right way because part of, part of blowfish is super toxic. But I, that, I'm not going to try it. Give me some raw oysters. MX, love those snot shells. Yeah. Crab cats are really nasty, William Lane. <laughs> Jack Trading, they have a pill for that now, Linda. Uh, they do. 
They do. I, well, that may be one of our sponsors coming up. Right, Jenny? Are we doing, we might be doing the, mar- the marital, they're like, it's a marital aid, but what is it? ED? It affects some percentage of men, right? Well, sucks for them. Cody Alley for five. I'm excited. My Hecklefish plushie has shipped. I can't wait to receive it. By the way, greetings from the middle of the U.S. map, Omaha, Nebraska. Thanks, Cody. Thank you for the five. There's Dirthead for 999. I used to love the outdoors. I think I'll stay in and watch more Y Files. Great episode as usual. Thanks, AJ and Gang. Yeah. Yep. Watch out for those Lone Star ticks. See, now I'm getting itchy. Look, for and for the most part, whatever you would put on to keep mosquitoes away, that works on ticks too. Because ticks and mosquitoes, they hunt us the same way through the, the ammonia in our sweat and the carbon dioxide in our breath. That's how they find us. So that's a, what a lot of those chemicals do is mask that. And, um, and I believe there are some chemicals that you could put on that are unpleasant to the biting insects, but I'm not 100% sure. I try not to go outside. I'm indoorsy. Zeb Francis, thank you for the five. Why fam, great episode. I always wondered, why is it as the crow flies? To me, as the swallow flies is just as good, especially an African swallow. I don't know if African swallows are migratory though. And next we need Y Files bourbon. That's coming. That's going to be crab, cat, bourbon, whiskey. That is, that is a product that is happening. It's going to be a limited run, limited edition, 500 bottles, and that's it. No name. I see you. I, see, I was thinking the same joke. Kevin Kwan gets it. Dragon Don. Here it comes. The unladen swallow. Yeah. Now, Question for you, Dragon. How how did the how how could a, a swallow c- carry a coconut? How is that even possible? I bet Jenny knows. She knows. She's showing her gender go fingers right now. Mike D for thank you for the five hundred one. Sometimes a debunking is welcomed. Yeah, I hear you. Any concern? Uh, any concern? The always unbiased YouTube will tag. Oh, any concern that they'll tag the episode with an always unbiased Wikipedia warning? There is that con- uh, severe concern. I was very careful to try to avoid it because it's 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 expensive when they context warning you. Like I'm asked all the time, you should do an episode on spontaneous human combustion. I did. No one's seen it. But it's there. Junior, Junior, we can all, Junior, Junior Fest Media, I see you. You got it. Wayne, you got it. Jessica Crows are not migratory either. Alex Vega says, why do you not trust the CDC? I don't know. There's Jai High H for 20. Won't you spend money on me? I'm really broke. Swimming here in my bowl. I have to pay three ex-wives. Spousal support for the rest of their lives. Those hobbies, lawyers, they cost me a ton. I think they're bleeding. Me just cause it's fun, baby. Guppies take all of my dough. Now to need braces. Here comes Skid Row, baby. Won't you consider tipping? Whoa, 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 whoa. Won't you consider tipping? AJ, great episode, but are you concerned about the government? coming after you and the crew, i.e. censor the show. I am concerned about that. Um, this one is a tricky one because, uh, like, if I did this episode, for, like, just for example, before, let's say, February of 2020, let's see, if I did this episode then, it wouldn't, I don't think it'd be an issue because whoever thought about the CDC before? I, I never really did. Um, but now everybody knows who they are. And they definitely don't want us to, to learn about all the all the failures and safety issues that they've had over the years, because then when when someone accuses them of something, and they say that's that's uh, disinformation, uh, we our safety is always shit's kiss. We can say, but that's kind of a lie, though. They don't want that. 
Hey, how are you guys doing? There's Jennifer. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. She's very polite. There's Gino. How are you? Doing all good. I'm live on Discord if anyone's around. Gino is live on Discord and live here as well. Doing double duty. Double duty. Uh, Victoria, how are you? Awesome. He's frozen. She's frozen for me. Is she frozen for you guys? Not now. Oh, there, now you're back. All right. That's fine. That's going to work. Uh, Gino, maybe a little teaser of Gino's story hour. Well, speaking of duty, it uh, does uh, show up in our story tonight. Uh, we are going to do uh, revisit a story that we did cover on the Y Files early in the um, early an early episode of the Y Files, and uh, it's a good one. All right, we're looking forward to that. Gina, can you get your mic a ball up a little bit, a little hotter? There he goes. Look at him. Look at him. That. I love that. Oh, that's not any better, but it's fun to watch you try it. <laughs> oh, okay, hang on. This is. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a. Uh, it's a good thing you're wearing pants for this uh, live stream. Thank goodness. Because it because you never know. It could be. Any better on the mic? No. Did I lose my mic? Can you guys hear me at all? No, I got you. Oh. I got you. It's just, it's it's time for a little giveaway. Thank you for that, Jai or hi. What What is our word? Um, let's, uh, dangler. <laughs> dangler. Dangler is the word. Okay. If you're new here, if this is your first time for the stream, first of all, I apologize. This is, this is all it is. This is not a professional operation. I never said it was, but here's what happens. Just type the word dangler in the chat. That's the only thing you type. D-A-N-G-L-E-R, just dangler. And... Mm -hmm. We're going to click draw, and then somebody's going to win. Well, everyone's talking about Victoria's feet from that intro. So what do they, what do they win, Victoria? They win a Hecklefish plushie, and they can come to Discord, put in a ticket, and we will get your name and info and get you that plushie. Yeah, but what does that have to do with your feet? Nothing. I have no idea. Oh. Nothing. Oh, okay. I didn't. All right. I just, people were asking. No well, her, feet were, her feet were dangling. They were dangling. They were. Uh, oh, wait, is, that, is my mic fixed? Because I switched. No, you sound good. That sounds good. That's better. Uh, Brenda Klingon is funny. That's, but that's not going to work. It's got to be dangler just how you see it. I, I don't think it has to be capitalized, but I would, I would do it caps just in, just in case. Just in case. David Willis loves the show. Florida, got to go to bed. Good night. Good night. David, thank you for hanging out tonight. Uh, Herbert Dingleberry is not going to work. Now Now everyone's going Dangleberry, Dingleberry. That's not going to work. Wrinkly Danglers is not going to work. Uh, dangling. Dangling. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. Not with you. That just encourages their bad behavior. Dangleberry. These are coming out soon. What are those? These are hecklefish slippers. Heckle did fish did slippers. Victoria get her feet in the show again? <laughs> now, when are those going to be available? Are they comfy? Uh, they're so comfortable. They're going to be available. Are they really? Are they really? You're just doing marketing. No, they're very comfortable. Okay. They're. Uh, the girls have not taken them off since we got them. They are wearing them around <laughs> oh. the office all day long. That means that means my wife's gonna have stinky feet. No, I have socks on. Oh, okay. Thank goodness. They're coming out at Christmas. <laughs> Gregory, long time watcher, first time dangler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Easton Brocky, you're on the air. Uh, slipper dangle will not work. Our Rogers uh, uh, hecklefish slippers too cute. So cute. Well, pick yourself up a, a pair. Hans says, "I'm surprised Jen can fit those Wenda toes in there without <laughs> ripping it apart." <laughs> Rude, but so funny. 
Like so remember when funny. remember when that body washed up on the beach of Flum Island and it had these abnormally long fingers? Is that like isn't that what you, your feet were like when you were born, Jenny? Wasn't your dad wondering if you were okay? Yes. Like he said, I looked like, like a lizard. Like a lizard? Yeah. He said, but only for like the first 24 hours. And then I was cute like my sisters, but. You have the right blood type. I do. That's right. She's got the lizard people blood type. I do. Danglebert Hunk, Hucklefish. That, that will not, not work. <laughs> Dirk Dangler was not going to work. <laughs> the Chris Mills Dangler. That's a good one, but that that's not going to work. Stinky Danglers. Soul Keith, thank you for that one. Heckle feet. No, that's not going to work. All right. Let's see what's going on in the super chats while we see who wants to win um, the foot rub from Victoria. Indeed. There's Lamont Indeed. Cranston. Indeed. Thank you. For that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so unprofessional. This isn't a live stream. This is a circus. Lamont Cranston, I'll have to give Plum Island a try. Next vacay, I got a rash on Fire Island on my last trip. Yeah, I got a rash. I got a rash. <laughs> now, Gino, and I are, Gino and I are smiling because we're from New York. and We know we know what Fire Island means. That means Lamont likes to partay. Captain Leadbottom, thank you for the time. My son and I watch every week. Hey, Leadbottom, little Leadbottom. <laughs> Great stories and entertainment, even the sponsor spots. What got you interested in this particular genre? Uh, my dad was into Art Bell and weird, weird stuff like that. Thanks, Joe Pucci. Loves the content. Yeah, so Art, I, and I bet there's quite a few people here, Kat, that, uh, that got into this stuff from Art Bell. You, Victoria, you're nodding. You, you listen to Art? No, I've just heard how many people listen to him from what you know doing this. Well, how I've how did you find the Y files? Science. I'm the science. Science. Yeah. And you're, and and, you're and very, look at you're science. And now I've dragged you into the gutter of conspiracies and Montauk monsters <laughs> and foot rubs. The Ace Thunder Thirty Two for 1999. Do you think Bill Gates will use connections with uh, HWO CDC to push meat allergy virus that would push the global warming agenda and make us eat his fake meat? Uh, the Ace Thunder. You know, I, I honestly don't think so, but it makes sense. It makes sense that Alpha Gal uh, Alpha Gal syndrome is now exploding in numbers. They there's 400,000 cases have been diagnosed. And it's estimated that it's probably 10 times that. Because there are a lot of people who just suddenly lost their taste for meat or they eat it and they get, you know, they get sick. And now they, they can't eat meat anymore. And it feels like that's, that's what the one more government wants, right? Mm -hmm. They want us to eat the bugs, live in a pod, own nothing and like it. That's not controversial to say, right? They said that stuff. They did. I did, Dimitri, I did, I turned off the ads just now. So everybody that's saying that they're we, seeing ads. We had ads, what, ads were running during the live stream? Yeah, yeah, they had said that if, even if you had monetization on it, only ran, they only ran at the beginning at the end, but apparently that's not the case because I've seen a bunch of people complaining in the. Oh, well, that's annoying and sorry about that. So I turned um, them off. Ra Randwa, what hoodie is Jen wearing? Oh, I am wearing our Rendlesham Forest incident. Oh, that's a cool one. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, Gino, you have you sporting any merch today? There he is. He's fun. I got. He's so fun. I got fear the crab cat today. Vincent Ruvala Ruval Kaba. AJ has been watching all Y Files episodes again. Was the first episode the math fact episode? It was. That was the first one. I worked so hard on that one. And I look back on it now and it's it's so cringy. We shot that one in our living room in Scottsdale. Well, the some scenes. Right. Because there were scenes, there was there was wardrobe changes, there was green screen. It was a whole production. Whole thing. Um, when I and when I first started. There was this, I, I, I watched every creator consultant. I watched all that stuff to try to learn how to do it. 
And a few guys were saying, look, just get started because your first 10 videos, you're going to hate them. They're going to be terrible. No one's going to watch and you're going to hate them. And I was like, ah, mine will, mine will be all right. Mine will be good. <laughs> mine will be good. good. They weren't. He was right. I, I, watched, I watched the old ones now and I'm like, oof. But they're up there. I haven't taken anything down. Well, you're not so bad, but Hecklefish had something with... He had something going on. He had an issue. He had like, I don't know if he had just gotten his lips in, you know, he just gotten like lip injections or something right before. I think he had the lip injections and he some, had some type of something. His voice was weird. It was, uh, he might've had some type of laryngitis or. He'd been practicing too much because he was super excited. Yeah. He's a little yeah, horse. Had, had that oyster disease. Uh, <laughs> by, the, by the way, is tuna fish uh, raw in a can? Is that. Is that part of the tilapia thing? Because I could swear I read something that they put tilapia in tuna fish cans. They might. No, I think that's cooked tuna, right? Because if you yeah. get tuna at sushi, it's way different texture than, than tuna in the can. But I mean, yeah. I, I eat all that stuff. So we can't have sushi now? That's a problem. No, we can have sushi. You're not worried about having to lose your legs? Well... Yeah, that's horrible, but that's not. I. Well, the other Lebowski, there you are for 11 11. AJ, you're always teasing that you win a foot rub with Victoria. Now you show her feet in the intro twice. Other Lebowski going crazy. He can get GR you Gracie, thank you for the 10. I'm pretty sure after tonight's episode, you can finally do an episode on RFK. Sirhan Sirhan and the woman in the polka dot dress. Um, well, we're going to cover JFK a little bit. I don't know if we can do RFK. I would do it. I don't know. I just don't know if he's as big of a draw. I'm sorry. But uh, it's still a good story. The Sirhan stories is still, it's a good conspiracy. Tony Danza will not win, Richard, but that's funny. Rodney Logan Dangler. Miller, 1999. I lived in Junction City, Kansas when they were about to open that lab. Job fairs and whatnot. Opening was postponed because it did not meet safety or security standards. Best place for a bio lab. Yep. And I think, I may be wrong, but I don't think I am. I think they are, I think they're, they're BSL level, they're BSL level four there. Bio, biosecurity level four, which is the highest that there is. That's with the, the most deadliest, deadliest things ever. I don't think Plum Island was ever four. I think there were three. I think I, I they may have tried to be four and they couldn't, get, they couldn't, they didn't have the facilities up to that level. I think I read that. Jason King, how did you talk Jen into marrying you? I got her drunk. <laughs> Alan Butterworth, thank you to the 10 Australian. Thank you to the entire team for creating an amazing channel. My son, Owen, celebrating his 12th birthday today. Could you give him a shout out? Hey, Lord Hecklefish. Hey, Owen. Owen, happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Owen. There he goes. Owen, happy birthday. There's there's a little bunny for 20. The, this video gave me anxiety, but I enjoyed it. I always thought a lot of these diseases were government made. Scary. Yep. Yep. I'm pretty sure this one was government made. I just didn't, I, I was worried about the algorithm for being too hardcore. If, if for some reason you're interested in learning more, like reading about the proof and the evidence, I did link link to the book the books that I used for the episode in the description. Lab 257 is an interesting, super scary book. Um, Bitten is more mainstream, like it's fairly newer. You can see her talking about stuff on on YouTube. And she interviewed Bergdorfer, and she says he said it was a leak. So you check out her book. Uh, she tells a great story. There's JJC Crane, 99. Is Google going to try and silence you guys because of this? Possibly. I always try to be careful, but possibly. Shona Fan Ford, good to see you back in the chat. This episode was for all the people that questioned our distrust in the government. Weaponized ticks, so much for living off grid. I can see the 28 days later scenario with the leaks. Yeah. That was one of the headlines 
um, about one of the leak stories. And it wasn't a headline in a wacky paper. It was in the Washington Post. I think it was Washington. It was either Washington Post or NBC. It was mainstream news said so a witness or a whistleblower from the CDC lab said it is like the plot of a, of a disaster movie in here. Like they really did duct tape deadly diseases. They, cl they sealed it with duct tape. Duct tape. And all kinds of stuff. All kinds of scary stuff. There is Lord Blood Will for seven. Human. I want you to know I said human. Thank you for all the dough tipping. As I'm sure you will find, Happy always is a good Owen. time. Ooh, 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 it's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. <laughs> hey, AJ and the Wild Files team, phenomenal episode as always. Can I get a birthday wish to my sister who's turning 19 tomorrow, 929? Her name is <clears throat> Adelicia. 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 I'm sorry. Adelicia. Adelicia. Are you sure that's right? It says Adelicia. It's not Adelisa. Adelicia. Adelicia. Thank you so much. You guys rock. P.S. Hecklefish plush for the win. Happy birthday, Adelicia. I, isn't it Adel, Adel, Is that right? It says A ah, A H. That's A. Ah. Oh. Kobe's asking, who does Hecklefish's voice, Jen? Hecklefish does Hecklefish's voice. Who does your voice? There's Mav for five. Great episode. Watching from Lyme, Connecticut. Oh, no. My daughter's lacrosse team is actually called the Lyme Ticks. That's funny. <laughs> That's just owning it. The Lyme Ticks. Um, are we still doing the drawing? <laughs> we are but i was trying to like get the number up but okay but we, there's 1300 in there do you want to you want to hit it no just keep doing some some super chats let it go a little bit i just noticed that people were still typing dangler so i was yeah, just dangler. Checking. Mike D 501. Now that Plum Island is about to close, would you take a tour there knowing the bugs are still on the island? I'm in the no camp. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably not, Mike. Probably not. In, in those books I talked about, when they, like after they had one of their several breakouts on the island, they, they, they burned everything. They sprayed all kinds of chemicals on there. They, they wiped the island out. And they've had to do that a couple of times. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going there. Mm -mm. But you know what they're going to do with it? They're making it a wildlife preserve, and, and they're even considering uh, building homes on there. Uh-uh. So uh, the, there are people trying to prevent that, um, but it's probably going to end up being a wildlife reserve that you can visit. Alex Rogan, 3333, I'm still itchy. Thinking about the ticks. Me too, man. Is that the last starfighter? That's cool. Avatar. Yeah. Weird life preserve, says Edminster for sure. Wildlife preserve. It's almost ironic if you think about it. There's GR Gracie. Tell Hecklefish she owes me a grand. Those strippers <laughs> and blow aren't free. They, they, they're not. They're not. Only a grand? Fenor Discord Records, 499. This, the episode made me feel the same way I always feel when thinking about the government. Why do we keep letting them get, getting away with this? What are you do? I, I, you, we don't have to. It just needs to be more of us. It, it looks like it's Fnor. It's like a sneeze. Fnor. Bless you. Fnor. <laughs> Fnor. Rush Rider 13 says, gray looking studio, y'all. Congratulations. The episode should wake people up a bit. Why can't when? 
We're Why talking comment? about what we want to do is like rent out the the drive in here in Vegas and do like a live premiere night where we show the video at the drive in and AJ will be there and everybody talk, you know, we talk about it and all that stuff. We think that would be a lot of fun. What well, you, you, you guys would be there. I'm going to come through on zoom. Uh, no, you're not. I'll come through on Skype, but you guys would definitely be there. No, you are be there. There's Brett Dozer for five. Was that video of the start of the after files, your new office? That's great. Yeah. That's, that's our new spot. Giant roaches and all. <laughs> <laughs> They're water bugs. <laughs> Yellow umbrella home roof, five dollars. You look up water bug, tell me what insect it is. Tonight's topic was horrifying with the CDC security breaches and ticks. Great episode and glad to see you back on Thursday nights again. Good to be back, Yellow. I don't think we're are, are we gonna be back here every Thursday? Um For we're gonna time. we're gonna change up the schedule a little bit. We're we talked about doing an after files like once a month, so at this time, but then doing this kind of same format, but like maybe a little earlier on a Tuesday so that more people can join. Cause for some folks, this is super late. And so we'll still do a live stream every week for these folks. Uh, it's super late. Right. Yes. Uh, so then doing it that way. So an after files once a month, um, the Tuesdays, a couple times a month, and then a watch along once a month. So we'll still be doing like live streams once a week, just um, maybe not always right after the episode. And your fourth favorite guy is on Discord almost every night. That's right. That's true. Gino's That's always right. on Discord. And we're launching the new podcast. Um, in a couple of weeks. So that'll be like longer, deeper dives into some of the stuff we've done before. And then also some of the topics that we can't do on YouTube because we'll get demonetized. So um, somebody's asking what's with the dangler. Do you want to show him again? Is somebody playing ping pong? <laughs> what is that? I, I hear that too. Danglers, when you enter into the chat, uh, put that in the chat to enter to win. But we're at 1500. Should we pull it or a couple more super chats? I do a couple more super chats. A couple more super chats. Yep, we do outnumber them by the millions, but not enough of us speak up. That's sort of why I said, uh, what are you going to do? I mean, even if we are speaking up, it's it's not enough people to to do anything because hardly anyone even knows about Plum Island. I wouldn't have known about it if I didn't live in New York. I would have never even known about it until this episode. I yeah, know about it. Viper Chief wondering why I'm drinking Red Bull <laughs> at eight thirty. <laughs> uh, I think because I'm going, I'm going. It might be on my sixteenth hour or so. And more than that, putting in long hours for you there. Charles Hunter for five. This episode was unnerving as heck, but in a different way. I know. I'm sorry, man. I thought it was important to, to do it, though. Sparkly Pig for five. Yay, the after fleas. Or after files. I'm sorry. I remember us talking about the Montauk monster in the after file of the Montauk project. That's right. Glad to revisit the saga. Yeah, so the thumbnail was a clip. Uh, it was a screen grab from the movie Splice. Uh, did you have you guys ever seen that movie? No. It's it's a creepy one. It's just, it's it's like a ho sci-fi horror. Uh, I guess I can't really just talk about it because a I don't want to spoil it, and b it's really good, ups some parts are upsetting. I know, know about it, but I haven't what? seen it. But you know about it. Mm -hmm. Scorpwana sauce splice, yeah, great movie. It's scary, it is, and uh, it's upsetting. But uh, but that thumbnail is clickable to me. Nick will, Nick will, Nick will, no, Nick will. Twenty too new to chat, but grew up in Maine. Yes, this has become way more of an issue in the last twenty years. It has. It has a 
if you look at the maps of Lyme disease through the years, there was hardly any Lyme disease in the 70s. Remember, I got bit by all those ticks in that area of the country in the 70s. And, and I'm, you know, I'm fine. <laughs> You're totally fine. <laughs> Wes Green, thank you for the 10. You mentioned the new facility in the middle of Kansas. I actually went to university studying food safety right next to where that building is being built. I was going to work there, but moved away. Yep. I think it might be open, Wes. I might, I might already be open. Mm -hmm. Cheapest big spender. Thank you for the 10 mowing yards in West Texas scares the crap out of me at Lone Star Ticks. So that plane in the crazies came from Plum Island. Now we truly know you aren't CIA. Awesome, but scary video, right? If, if I was CIA, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have done this video, right? <laughs> sure. Um, go ahead, Gino. I got a Plum Island question. When before we did this video, I'm I, I feel like you were you totally did not think that Lyme disease was released from Plum Island, and I feel like you changed your mind a little bit after doing it. And one other thing I wanted to mention was, didn't you tell me when we were like weeks ago when we were plotting this this video out? Didn't you say that there was Lyme disease? found in the 1700s? Yes. So there's evidence of Lyme disease going back to, uh, 16, 17th century, 18th century, but it's just descriptions of symptoms. But Otzi the caveman, who's uh, the 5,000-year-old mummy who was found in the Alps, there's DNA evidence that he had Lyme disease. So I, I don't think the government invented it necessarily. I think they just weaponized it. Possibly. Yeah. I, there was I, no Lyme disease really in, in the seventies. And now there's Lyme disease. It's, it's an epidemic in the Northeast and now it's all over the Michigan area. If you look at the maps, it's all over the great lakes. Did I interrupt you, Jennifer? I was just saying, um, yeah, I mean, I think that they were testing it because you have this disease that's, you know, spread by ticks and then it got out and then it gave it to the other ticks and then it gave it to the other ticks and then it just spread and spread and spread and spread. And Bergdorfer is the scientist who discovers Lyme disease, who makes the connection with that spirochete bacteria, just happens to be a bioweapon scientist who weaponized ticks for the government. Which that's that's indisputable. That's a, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's a fact. He did that. So just a coincidence, I guess. Just you know, coincidences are fun. <laughs> no name gain. No gain. No gain. Of, he might have done gain of function. In prodigal four or five seems like a good use case for eugenics, bioengineering the Lone Star ticks to be all male till they fade into in, into non-existence. Yep. I'm sorry. D I'm a child. Dale, <laughs> Dale typed uh, dangling Virginia and it, it made me laugh. It made me snort laugh. I thought it was dangling Virginia. <laughs> What a child. I'm a child. <sighs> Salvatore for five. Fun part of the lo fun part of the local in Kansas is it's a 20 minute ride from post Fort Riley. Thanks, y'all. Awesome show and work. Well, thanks, Sal. Good luck. Good luck out there. John W. Hey, what followers? I'll be out your way next month. Cool if I swing by. Also got a feeling Hecklefish is how AJ expresses his actual views of the world. Uh, you can open a ticket with Victoria. She will give you her home address and you can stop by there. <laughs> Here's Winston Alexander for five. It starts with a small percentage of cricket protein ingredients. Oh, we're talking about eating bugs. Then increases over time while animal protein gets reduced. I think, he, I think it could be true. I think, I think it could be right. 
There's Wayne Hula, Hula, Wayne Hula for 50 bucks. I just want to celebrate another day of swimming. I just want to celebrate another super chat. Put my faith in you humans, and you humans let me down. Then you give me a shekel, and it turns my heckle frown upside down. I just want to celebrate, yeah, yeah, another day of swimming. AJ, I know you wouldn't agree, but in my opinion, you are the new Art Bell. I found art when he came to XM. I became addicted. Since then, I've listened to everything I can find on the internet. He wasn't an expert. He was a very good host. Well, that's very nice of you to say, Wayne, but he was a master. He was a master. But it's very nice of you to say. I was a huge Art Bell fan, as you know. Um, ask, Chad, asking me, how's it dangling? <laughs> Long and loose and full of juice. Thanks again for that support, Wayne. What? What? Nothing. What? Nothing. <laughs> I guess Jenny never heard that one before. I didn't. You even made Gino make a face. So. <laughs> well, Gino's heard that one before. <laughs> uh, are you ready to, to find out who's going to be rubbing Victoria's feet? Let's do it. All right. Here we go. Last call for danglers. Art Bell was the grand dangler. He he was. He's the <laughs> he, he's the grand dangler. <clears throat> dangler Trek Two: The Wrath of Crab Cat. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. We have to get uh, Rob to do some movie posters for us. Yes. There's, there's Todd MC, Sean, Alyssa, BZ, Cherry, Chris Kelly, Brandon, JSM, Karen Butcher, TJ, Ethical Hacks, Zeb. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Amazing. That's amazing. You're going to think that we have, I mean, every, people accuse us of, ha, ha, put, of cheating that the fix is in and Zeb the super friend. For, I, I think Zeb is probably willing to, to forego his foot rub and have us try again, right? Yes, and we'll send him something yeah. special from the team. All right. Because he, he has his crab. He has his plushie because – on his Instagram, he showed himself going on a premiere day walk with his his hecklefish on his shoulder. Oh yeah. You can't redraw. You have to do the whole. You can't put the. Got to do the whole it. thing over. I, I mean, got to do the whole thing over. And we don't have to. I mean, what do you got? You guys want to? You know, since everyone's doing dangler, I'm just gonna fire it up again. Just gonna fire up dangler again, rather than do a new word. See, Zeb is Zeb the super fan Francis. He's on Patreon. He's written episodes. He's done research. He's written Hecklefish parody songs. Zeb is part of the part of the family, and already already has a lot of access to us and to all the good stuff. So, it'd be more fun if somebody knew one. All right, so we'll let Dangler live for a little bit. If you if well, you already put in Dangler, put it in again. <laughs> what? Oral Bora for thirty. Please cover Maria Orsic and the Han Hanabu. Be very interesting to see what you find. You have to put that in the tips line. I I don't know what any of that is. You don't. Do, I'm assuming Gino doesn't. Maybe he's just frozen. I I don't know what that is. Am I frozen? Is Misha Michelle again for 20? Greetings from Manhattan, Kansas. Yes, current home of the MBAF Labs, a.k.a. Plum Island 2.0. Oh, joy, great show. Although it's a little too close to home for me. Keep it up. Good luck, Misha. Enjoy those steaks. While you can. Hey, Jessica LaPlante. Thank you for that. Very kind of you to support. And thanks to everyone supporting with Super Chats tonight. It really does help. We have to 
make sure that we give Victoria her, her weekly pedicures. There's Lavel you crew. Good to see you in the chat for five. Watch out for Hannibal Leichter on Plum <laughs> Island. In the movie, that's where she tells him that he can go on his, his uh, he, he can go to the minimum security prison. On Plum Island? In yeah. The movie? I don't yeah. remember that. That's where, you know, when she goes to, with a deal to, to a deal with him and, you know, twice a year or whatever, he can go to this place and see fresh, breathe fresh air and stuff. That's where. Rush Rider 13, y'all, did y'all see the mRNA vaccine vegetables? Let's just. No, I don't. Along. Let's just, let's just move right along. Here's Isaac M. Costa. For 10, Jordan Peterson's daughter had Lyme disease and cured it with only eating meat. That's true. I feel there's something really odd about people who only eat meat and cure their illness because of it. Uh, I think I think uh, Dr. Peterson is on the same diet, and he said he's never felt better. Well, Jen and I did paleo for a long time, and uh, we looked and felt pretty great. Yep. There's something about it. Danny Stormborn, that was awesome. Zed one, his profile pic on the internet. <laughs> you could be right about that. DSO Dave, thank you for that generous super chat. There's Lisa. Lisa, is she is that is she from the Cult Jam? Is that is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Breen Brack DDT responsibly. That's the bed bug problem too. They used to spray it all over. Uh, all over, even over swimming pools with kids in it. Yep. When DDT was legal, malaria was almost eradicated. It was almost eradicated from the planet. Now it's now it's it's one of, if not the biggest killer on the planet. It was something I was talking to someone about in the middle of this episode. It's that malaria kills more people every year than just about anything else. But they're it's they're poor African people, so so. You know, so maybe there's something to that. But yeah, DDT, bed bugs also. <laughs> um, that's the environmental lobby. You got that done. Alien of the Apocalypse 2 for 20. Yet there are doctors that completely deny how bad Lyme is, how much it has spread, and even chronic Lyme disease they will deny. Vanderbilt has idiots working there, apparently. Great episode and love the new place agent. You're right, Alien. A lot of doctors don't want to deal with Lyme disease. They'll say, well, I don't know anything about it and go somewhere else. That's certainly true. Rob R. for 1999 and 1991, a 53-year-old Iceman was discovered in Oats Valley, Austria, and was later found to contain the DNA of the bacteria responsible for Lyme disease. Great show as always. Thanks, everybody. Well, that would, you, you learned that in the episode tonight, Rob. But I appreciate the support. There's Ricky's grandson, uh, do you cover the Tsarina hole in Bulgaria in the episode about ancient civilizations? Thanks for all your work. I don't, but I can look into that. Uh, we've been talking about doing an episode on that because we cover, we cover every hole in the business. You do like looking into holes. <laughs> There's Invictus for 50. You like this show? Send me some dough. You can super chat. I hope you know about that. There is one thing that I am sure of. You gotta tip me some more, human. Won't you tip me with some money? Hey, hey, fishy. Fishy. Fishy, don't you know you gotta tip the fishy? Hey, hey, tip the fishy. Tip the fishy tonight. This is quantum donation from a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Thanks, Invictus. Invictus sending a super chat through his Kozarev mirror. Fan dangle's not gonna work. Austin Dangler Powers, not gonna work, Kaylee. Come on, you know better than that. 
no name, pretty hard to trust any doctor these days. Find a good doctor. Shock the dangler, Jojo. Uh, T, uh, T, this TSR for uh, 320. Man, you're terrorizing everybody. Way to go, LOL. Yeah, sorry about that, but sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes we have to do it. I think it's important. There's the dude 087, very reliable in the chat for $10. Hey, AJ, uh, have you seen the 97 alien interview video? What are your thoughts on it? John Stewart recently did a whole thing on it. Definitely worth a watch. I haven't seen that. Have you seen that, Chino? No, uh, but if John Stewart did something on it, it's got to be pretty, uh, you know, out there. I'm surprised I haven't heard of it. And we'll look into that, dude. DSO Dave, $100. They see me swimming in my waist. Send me money because you know that my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Want to smell my bowl? It's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl. It's dirty. My poop is nasty. It's floating. Please tip me because you know that my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Want to smell my bowl? It's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl. It's dirty. <laughs> Was everyone seeing Jen's just frozen on that goofy face? Oh, <laughs> she just dropped off. Just... Oh, just, it was just, that was just great. But now she's gone. Yeah, having, having some tech issues. Uh, DSO Dave, we have no idea, no idea what we don't know. Hey, being from New York, are you familiar with Pine Bush in Orange County? Consider the UFO capital of the Northeast, not too far from Stewart AFB in Newburgh where they have ICBMs. No, I don't think I know that one. Pine Bush. I'm not even sure which Orange County he means. You know, I, I think he's talking about the Hudson Valley. Because um, that's where New, Newburg is. And Jenny, did you see your frozen face? I have no idea what it looked like. That's awesome. It was well, perfect. <laughs> my mouse completely stopped working. And... So I was frozen, and I thought maybe it needed to be charged, so I plugged it in. That didn't do anything. So I was I was restarting my computer the way you're not supposed to, by just holding down the button, and then the whole screen <laughs> turned pink, and it was a whole thing. So anyway, but it's working now. All right, get your danglers in. We're going to do this uh, this drawing part. De, oh, no. This drawing, and then it's time for Gino's story hour. Do you need one of those, AJ? No, no, no. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> fine. <laughs> All right. If, if Zeb wins again, this is definitely fixed. Definitely rigged, rigged game. Here we go. Last if he wins day. again, he needs to play lottery. I, he better not have even entered into it. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's Mike. There's Cindy. Queen. Dangerous. John. Troy. Charles. Eduardo. Nikki. Conquering. DJ. Craig. Katie. Brandon. Morales. Face. Blackbeard. <laughs> All of our longtime Patreon members are winning is what's going on. Um, so it's rigged. The fix is in. So, like Shadow a Ding Dong, you are correct. This game is rigged. Chase, you're right. Rigged. If Ron you Potter, just, rigged. Up at the top where it says draw again, if you just hit that, it wouldn't start over. I mean, it wouldn't oh, just. Shit. It says draw again up there. I didn't even see that button. <laughs> it did. I didn't even know well, there was a button up there. Do it again. Let's we'll do black. We'll give Blackbeard his, but do it one more time and let's just give one more. One more? Yeah. Just hit the draw again button. All right. Here it goes. There's Louie, Doom, Evan, Brandon, Lori, Stacy, Wayne, Jack, Mary, Richard, Aiden, JSM, Chaz, Grizzly, Roy Ellis, the great gig of the Vagabundos. Mother Falcon is the okay. winner. Ex Mother Falcon. Congratulations. Yay! You have won uh, one private foot rub with Victoria. Lotion is optional, but encouraged. Uh, and uh, what does Mother Falcon have to do to, to 
to get close to your toes, Victoria? Come to Discord and put in a help desk ticket and we'll get your name and, and address and send it away to you. And Blackbeard, I'll take care of you too. All right, Falcon. Make sure you get your shoe size in there so she knows what to expect. No. <gasps> Tell me something I don't know. Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Jet set and betting at the regular scenes Worldwide travel feed with the green Jack hair, he's the bone who bears Big bushes change smell With all the hair Hey, hippity doppity doppity do Where's Gino? Hey, that's who? Yeah, it's true Cause that's who he cares about He breaks around the mouths and whistles up Our trip six, very excited for Gino's story hour Jessica Sanchez, bring me some Gino She's not the first woman to say that Regional Alexa, yeah, it's, the game is rigged. I don't know. I can't deny it. Uh, Soul Keef is ready for Gino Story Hour, yelling, roll it up. What the world? Robot Granny. All right. So today's story, Robot Granny. For tonight's story, we're going to revisit a story that was covered uh, briefly on the Y Files in an episode on Mount Shasta. Uh, but we have an update. So uh, it's not just a retelling. Uh, now I'm going to uh, go in. I, I don't want to go into all the wacky phenomena that happens on Mount Shasta because we I'd be talking for, you know, hours about it. So uh, tonight we're just going to talk about Robot Granny, which I, I really feel like is one of the uh, most compelling stories uh, that ever came out of Mount Shasta. It also has been uh, written about on the Missing 411. Uh, uh, shout out to uh, uh, David Politis. Uh, so this is a strange one because uh, it started out as just like a scary missing person story, uh, but it had a happy ending. So, um, you know, even with the happy ending, uh, the details in between are, are pretty eerie. Uh, on September 12th, uh, 2011, not really that long ago, um, as far as these stories go, a lot of times I'm telling stories from way back in the in the day, you know, years and years ago, decades ago. But this one only happened uh, uh, about, uh, you know, uh, over a decade ago. So on September 2nd, uh, 2011, a family went on a camping trip to Fowler's Campground near uh, the McLeod River uh, at, at, on the base of Mount Shasta. Um, since they were pretty familiar with the area, they decided to camp in a slightly secluded part of the campground called uh, Camp 4. Um, uh, not the caveman coffee slide. All right, here we go. Uh <laughs> So, um, uh, so I'm on the wrong slide. Let's see if I could uh, figure it out here. Fawn Miller is always proud of your of your presentation. So uh, I'm missing the slide, but uh, you could see in the top right there, uh, Fowler's uh, main campground. The the um, on the uh, right, the blue dot on the right is where they were um, were camping. So. Uh, in the early evening, uh, the mom of the family was in the camper. She was cooking up some beans while dad was flipping some burgers on the grill. Uh, their, and their daughter came running into the campsite, hysterical, saying, hey, uh, my three-year-old brother, he disappeared. So uh, parents go crazy. Um, the uh, kid and his dog were playing with some older boys from a nearby camp in the woods when the kid thought they heard a rattlesnake. So they yell rattlesnake and everyone scatters, begins to run. Now, since this is a three-year-old kid, he was quickly left behind. You know, they got little tiny legs. Uh, when they realized he wasn't with them, they searched uh, around with no luck. Uh, so they told his older sister, they were afraid to tell the parents, they told his older sister, hey, we lost your brother. So the family flew into a, a flurry and began to search the forest for about 15 minutes with no luck. Uh, but we're smart enough to then get on the phone to authorities uh, immediately. And luckily, within an hour of him being missing, they had over 100 police, firefighters, local volunteers, uh, all searching for him. Uh, and since it was Labor, Labor Day weekend, the campsite was filled with, with people. So they searched uh, uh, you know, every vehicle and tent in the area. They were worried that he was abducted, you know, of course. Um, uh, they weren't taking it lightly. 
Uh, they sta stationed searchers down the river in case the boy fell in and uh, they didn't want his body or hopefully alive uh, to go over the falls ne nearby. Uh, and they set up roadblocks in and out uh, of the camp campsite and created a plan for a grid search. Uh, you know how you get, you know, people in a row just walk walking through the woods looking for them. So around and so uh, this happened again early early evening uh, around sunset the boy's dog was found wet and shivering on the side of the riverbank uh, of course that's not a good sign uh, I mean you, I, you, usually a dog won't separate from its owner for any reason uh, you know you don't want to be lost in in the woods in the blackness at night uh, either way there's all sorts of predators out there on Mount Shasta bears wildcats uh, they rule the forest and not to mention all the alien activity that's been reported there. Uh, you know, abductions besides this one, plenty of abductions and uh, UFO, UAP sightings all over the place in Mount Shasta. So according to the police report, approximately four hours into the search uh, and a mile away from uh, where he disappeared, a set of uh, child footprints were discovered near a riverbank. Uh, the prints were a little strange because the shoes were on the wrong feet. So as the, they were following the, the kid's impression, they could see that the shoes are on the wrong feet. Uh, once the prints were found, uh, they directed all the volunteers to start searching that area. And the volunteers were wading hip deep in the river there, uh, searching all around the banks. They, they called, uh, you know, from there, they called in the canines to help track the boy. And approximately five hours... He'd been gone. Uh, it's been, again, five hours since he disappeared when the dogs finally got, got there. Uh, let's see here. Change my. So um, uh, it was around 1245 a.m. that the sheriff's deputy, Sam Kubowitz, uh, and his canine partner, Tom, who was a three-year-old Dutch shepherd who was described as a good boy, uh, find, found the toddler only about 500 feet from where they found the original footprints. Uh, the little guy was just sitting under a bush. Uh, and they'd previously searched that area up and down. So wacky to find this kid just sitting under a bush right there. When the dogs, uh, the canines approached him barking uh, wildly, the kid thought he was about to get eaten by an animal. Uh, but that's when he, the kid heard his name being shouted out. So he jumped up screaming, here I am. Here I am. Come get me. Um, so uh, so this was an article that I'm showing here uh, about the missing boy. So so in in the um, in the whole story I'm telling here, uh, the boy was listed as a John Doe anonymously because he was a kid. So we never really knew what was exactly facts in this story and what was was uh, brought brought in, uh, brought up as like, you know, attaching it to this real story. But we do know that a kid went missing, was reported on, and, uh, you know, and luckily they, they found him. So um, uh, let's see, number four. So now I got to move the... <laughs> my slide is not working. Can anyone move my slide over? Live stream is so unprofessional. Really, what are you even doing? There you go. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Uh -huh. So th this is the police the police report uh, on it. So they f they find the find the kid, um, you know, and the, the child. He only said at the time that he got lost. He didn't tell anyone about the hours that he was gone because he was gone almost five hours. Um, just that he got lost. Uh, with such a positive outcome, the police never questioned the boy, and the entire family rejoiced at you know uh, being reunited. Uh, however, that's only half the story. That, that's the good half. So a year later, um, the boy is at his grandmother's. Um, and uh, uh, so, excuse me, uh, a year later, the uh, a post appeared on a website called um, Above Top Secret. Above Top Secret is a forum of all sorts of paranormal and alien activity. It's actually one of my favorites. Uh, everyone should check it out. Um, if you're a Wi Files fan, you'll love Above Top Secret. Um, and uh, let's move my slide along. Here we go. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. I'll stop. So, 
Yep, I got it. <laughs> it's working again for me. Yeah, so here's well, here's the post zero nine forty six point four four. The After Files live stream has proven itself once again to be extremely unprofessional. So here's the post that that was was put up. Uh, the poster claimed that a year earlier, her three and a half year old grandson was lost for five hours, and thanks to the volunteers and rescue personnel, uh, he was found. Uh, it was easily determined that this was the same boy from the from the Bush case. Um, the post said that about three weeks after the original incident, the boy was playing at her house, and out of the blue, he said said to Granny, "I don't like my other grandma, Cappy." Cappy was her nickname. Uh, he called her this because he couldn't pronounce her real name, Kathy. So Grandma Kathy was Grandma Cappy to the boy. Um, she said to him, what are you talking about, buddy? I'm your only Grandma Cappy. And her confusion was quickly replaced by uh, fear. He replied to her saying, don't you remember when I was lost in the woods? Well, the other Grandma Cappy grabbed me and took me to a creepy place. She's really a robot. So now this kid is telling his grandmother, you know, hey, when I was gone... I was actually kidnapped by you, but you were a robot. Um, so she's, she's uh, when she pressed on for more information on what happened while he was lost, he said, the other grandma, Cappy, brought me to a cave with spiders and there was purses and guns lying around. I was so scared, but I didn't touch anything. And when grandma, uh, when grandma climbed the ladder, the light made her look like a robot. There were other robots there too, but they didn't move. Pretty uh, creepy uh, way for a kid to describe it. Um, the boy went on to describe robot granny in further detail. He said uh, she had the same hair, feet, and even her face, uh, of course. Uh, why it fool fooled him? Because uh, he was just, you know, lost in the woods. And all of a sudden he sees his grandma. He's going to go with his grandma. Uh, when he talked about her looking like a robot, when the light sparkled on her, uh, our real grandmother got the impression that he was talking about a hologram more than a robot. Uh, he said that the guns and purses were on a shelf, but looked very old. Uh, he also said that the other robots seemed frozen and uh, made a gesture that made his grandmother think of how Han Solo looked frozen in carbonite. <laughs> so we already like the real grandmother because she's a Star Wars fan. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, RC Custom Cats is Granny, a fully functional robot. That's that's a, a TNG reference for you nerds in the chat. Talking about a famous line from Data. Um, so pressing on, uh, Grandma asked, what did they do during the hours he was gone? And he told her, well, Robot Granny made me lay down to look at uh, his tummy. Uh, then she tried to get him to poop on a sticky piece of paper. But... It, <laughs> He couldn't go. Yep. He's a shy pooper too. Shy pooper. She told him that, uh, that, uh, so the robot granny told him that he's from outer space and that they put him in his mom's tummy. Uh, then she, uh, then she took him back to the river and said, wait under this bush here until someone finds you. And, uh, sure enough, um, you know, he got, got found under that bush. Um, so grandma, Quickly picked up the phone, called her son, says, hey, what, what have you been watching uh, on TV? Because uh, in case he was just, you know, conflating it with something he saw recently. Remember, this is a three-year-old and only three weeks have gone by uh, since he disappeared. Uh, so it had been pretty recent. So it would have had to been something he'd just seen. Um, her son said, he, you know, he just told him the same exact story a few days earlier, but he dismissed it thinking... It's just the kid's wild imagination. So, however, there was one detail of the story that didn't sit uh, well with uh, uh, the real grandma. Grandma, Which one do you think that is? The pooping. So she'd never seen any sci-fi movies where anyone was using sticky paper to go to the toilet. Uh, although, you know, I'd argue that this could have saved Phantom Menace if they had Jar Jar Banks getting caught mid-dump. Uh, it was at this point that she relayed her own personal experience at Mount Shasta to her son. Um, a year before the abduction, she was also at Mount Shasta with her camping buddy at a campground called French Gulch. At, at night, before they went to sleep, they, uh, 
kept seeing many red eyes through the trees staring at them. They assumed this was migrating deer and didn't think much about it and went to sleep. I don't know if I could go to sleep after that, but um, let me change. So on my slides. Aren't you going to join us in the pooping? <laughs> so he, so here's where grandma uh, uh, was camping. So you can see it's a, a good distance away, but still it's just on the other side of Mount Shasta on a, on a different side, side of the, uh, of the mountain. Um, so she assumed that it was migrating the air. Didn't think much of it. They went to sleep. Uh, when she woke up in the morning, she was out of her tent, face down in the dirt, and felt the back of her neck, which had a puncture wound on it. She felt sick and woke up with her camping buddy. Uh, so he woke up her camping buddy, uh, and he also had the same puncture wound on the back of his neck. They both felt severely sick throughout the day, and the effects lingered on for days after. Uh, um, and she reports that she was like feverish and lethargic and uncreative which is a weird thing to throw in there when, when you're just talking about being sick. Um, but maybe she was very artsy. Uh, she thought it uh, could have been a, a stroke or some kind of mercury poisoning from because she was panning for gold in the stream that, that day before. Um, but that really wouldn't explain uh, how her special camping friend had the same wound and sickness since he wasn't in the, the water with her. Uh, she went on to say that she made this post uh, on... Uh, you know, online, not to have her story believed, but to find out if anyone else had experienced anything similar. Um, there were initiatives being put together by the government that kept shutting down the forest due to lack of funding, they said. But she wondered if it had something to do with something more nefarious. Uh, however, she also vowed to never go up there again unless she was going up with an army of people. You know, she had, an, uh, had, had enough of, uh, you know, robot poopers. So, uh, so, uh, had she not had her, her own experience up at the same spot, she would have just assumed it was her, uh, grandson's imagination. Uh, after the post, uh, that's when she contacted David Politis, uh, who wrote about it in, the, in his book, Missing 411. Uh, and at this point she was still anonymous and remained that way until recently. Um, so when we did the Mount Shasta story, she was still anonymous at, at, at that, that point. So, so since the story came, came out, uh, um, so since the story came out originally, the real granny and the boy came forward. Uh, so here I'm going to show you a quick clip of the grandson and her speaking uh, about the incident. Let's see if I can get this to work. Okay. He was old when he went missing. He's uh -huh. never spoken publicly about his ordeal until now. I'm really interested to, to hear what you got to say. I went missing somewhere around here down this river. Sarah, you were, I mean, obviously a lot younger. What do you remember about what happened from this event? Indiana had made his way off with a couple of older kids, um, I think down a little bit further from where everybody was out of sight. Um, and as he described it, somebody yelled rattlesnake. And these kids took off running, and Indiana was so small, he was left behind. They kept on running, and then I was all alone in the woods. Now everybody here is freaking out. Where is the kid? We have hundreds of people out here searching for Indiana helicopters. They had checkpoints along the river, safety points, where they were ready to catch a baby's body if it went over the falls. How long was he gone for? For a total of five hours, he was gone. Something happened when I disappeared for those five hours. I eventually told my grandma. And he says, I don't like the other grandma, Cappy. I said, well, what are you talking about? I'm the only grandma, Cappy. He said, no, you remember when I was lost in the woods? The and real said, granny oh, even looks like a robot like, to me. Another grandma, <laughs> Cappy, grabbed me and took me to a creepy place. <laughs> She led me into a cave. She took my shirt off and pressed on my stomach and was doing like experiments on me. I asked him, was there anybody else in the cave? 
And he said, yes, Grandma, but they were like frozen against the side. And uh, he mentioned that there were purses and guns in there. And I know we live in an area where people go missing. So in my mind, I'm thinking, has other campers or somebody, you know, a hunter has been abducted or something? And I said, um, well, were you scared? And he said, well, I wasn't scared until she walked over to a ladder in the cave. And when I saw her go up the ladder, she sparkled all around her. I said, well, what happened after that? And he said, well, she took me over to a bush and said, you wait there until they come and find you. That ended up being the trail that he was found on. Do you believe that what he saw um, and experienced is, is real? I genuinely believe something happened, genuinely. And with all of the different mysteries and things that are surrounding this location, um, I, there's no doubt in my mind that something happened. All right, so so that, that's uh, that's there. Uh, so you know, when people come out and put their face to to a story like this, it's a it's a little more um, you know uh, believable. Um, you know, so what's what's our conclusion? Uh, I think the boy experienced something. Um, you know, and it was with someone, you know, the details are a little too specific for a three-year-old to make up. Uh, when he was in the cave, he saw old guns and purses, which if other people had gone missing because of robot granny, uh, it would make sense that their stuff was still there. You know, uh, the other robots that were there, uh, maybe they're missing hunters uh, that are dead or in suspended animation. But you'd think if they were decaying, the kid would have kind of been able to tell you know, they weren't looked weird. Um, there's also, of course, speculation of why robot granny looked like like regular granny. And that brings us back to the prick on the back of her neck. Uh, maybe, uh, her, you know, the prick on the back of her neck. Uh, so maybe her DNA was extracted and that's what was used to produce the likeness of robot granny. So personally, I think... We do need an army of Wi Filers to go up to Mount Shasta and do a thorough inspection of what's happening up there. Uh, there's just too many stories to to deny that uh, Mount Shasta isn't ha doesn't have something paranormal going on. So that's the story of uh, Robot Granny. And if you enjoyed the story, uh, uh, please uh, go to CavemanCoffeeCo.com and get yourself some Java 51, the best coffee blend in the entire universe. Use promo code the Y files. All right, there you know story hour. Sorry, I had to rely heavily on my notes on, on that one. No, I think it was, I think it was good. It was a good one. We got we got we got poop in there. We got Granny. She got a prick on her neck, and then it, it had everything. I mean, this is the only case that I'm even aware of that, um, you know, number one had uh, a doppelganger of a, of a family member. Um, but if these hunters that keep going missing in the four missing 411, they, you know, they typically don't get found. So um, like other stories that we've gone through, like the Jimmy Hoffa one uh, the, uh, the other week, they he thought that he was too old to be taken by the aliens. So maybe this kid was too young to be taken. You know, the aliens don't know when, you know, when in life they got to steal these, these guys, they got to wait till um, sexual maturity so they could get that, you know, star seed. So, uh, Je so Jen's going to read some super chat. Okay. Um, I'm going to work on my Philosopher's Stone for a couple of minutes, then I'll let you guys go, and then we'll spend just a couple of minutes going through some fake NASA files, some some NASA fails. Hey, okay, I had to – remember how my face froze, so I don't know where you were on the Super Chats. I, I've got them. They're good. Okay, great. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, we got to do Gino's shirt. We got to show everybody the new Story Hour shirt. We'll do that as soon as he gets back. Okay. Uh, Morana Valdez for $20. Thank you very much. Intense episode. Got me thinking about how absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. That is 100%. Your reminder to get involved so they at least know we're paying attention was right on point. Stay kind and thought provoking. Appreciate your work. Well, we appreciate you, Morana. Thank you very much. 
Mandy Bell for $10 Australian, I think. Me and my partner think you're amazing. We appreciate all the hard work you and your team do. I really want the Hecklefish slippers, but they don't show on your store. Much love from Australia. Mandy, they're not showing yet. Uh, we are going to, they've been ordered and uh, we'll let you guys know here as soon as they are available. We're very, very excited about them. I do think we're going to put a pre-order in though. So I think you're going to be able to pre-order mm -hmm. them. I think so. Um, there's the elusive AJ out of his natural habitat. Mike and Murph for $10. Thank you. Mike and Murph. Thanks for another week of fine entertainment. AJ shout out to Victoria and Mrs. Y files for keeping the boys straight. We try, but it is certainly more than a full-time job. Uh, after image 289 for 2112. That was a killer episode. Although some parts really ticked me off. <laughs> I see what you did there. Glad to have the YFLs team back on the After Files. Here's a little loop for Hecklefish so he can take care of his guppies. He needs to cover more Rush tunes. We'll, we will work on that. Thank you very much, After Image. Uh, Salty Dranger for $10. Did you hear about this archaeologist in Zambia discover oldest wooden structure in the world dating to 476,000 years ago? I did just see an article about it. I didn't have a chance to read the whole thing, but yeah, they found um, some, some wood. I think it was partially in like a body of water, but it was obviously like a structure that was built and yeah, it dated to almost 500,000 years ago. So I'm, I'm very interested to find out a little bit more about that and kind of see what happened with that i'll i'll have aj take a look at into it a little bit more before um next week's episode on gebekli tepe so that will be very exciting uh let's see phil leonetti for five dollars hecklefish rocks he does indeed rock um he can be a pain in the ass sometimes but he does indeed rock he's very cool ron klotzner klotzer Hello, Ron, for $5. So Gino can get a pre-roll for his half-hour story hour. Welcome back from L.A. Yes, we are glad to have Gino here. And uh, it's going to be a fun weekend for him. I think there's a big comedy festival here in L.A. Uh, that, that we're looking forward to. So that'll be fun. L.A., Las Vegas. I still say L.A. It's going to take me a while. Uh, Katie, 1999. Thank you so much, Katie. Epic episode. Thank you, Wife House team. Off to buy more bug spray for this Alabamian hecklefish for Prez, as always. Yeah. I mean, I was watching some of this, and um, yeah, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, the Perry Smith for $9.99. Another great episode, Why False Crew. Man, it's getting to where we can't even trust our own government these days. What do we do, AJ? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if it's... I think it's just more of the same. We're just way more connected now, so we just know a lot more about what's going on than we used to. Scarily enough, it almost feels like they're getting away with less now because we know what's going on. I mean, God only knows what they were doing before everybody walked around with a camera in their pockets. So, yeah, it's crazy. There he is. All right, I'm going to do a couple of super chats, and then we'll take a quick look at this NASA video, and then we'll call it a night. Okay. One thing before we go, uh, you oh, mentioned yeah. earlier uh, about the, um, the mouse in space. Uh, it's a really interesting one. Uh, it's it's definitely a mouse, but they're faking that they're in space. He's just up there hanging out. Who's faking even, it? NASA. Uh, NASA. I mean, he doesn't even have a helmet on or nothing. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. In the, in the private chat, it says Gino Story Hour shirt. You guys covered that? No, not yet. Because you got to bring it up. I do? Yeah, on the screen. Uh, 
Am I in the right place? Yep. You, Back out yeah. So this is shop at the is a great way to support the channel. Patreon also is our favorite way. Become a Patreon member. You get early access to videos, no commercials, uh, exclusive products, early access to products, and two extra live streams a week because you, everybody needs more of this. Uh, but two extra live streams a week, just a few. So that's the Patreon um, page. It's a great way to support us. The Super Chat's awesome. Thank you for doing that. And here we have uh, shops at the whitefiles.com. And I'm looking, oh, there it is. I love this. Uh, that, that. Yeah, they didn't put a. Yay! So good. I'd wear that. SMK. <laughs> All right. Shop to the whitefiles.com. Get your Gino story hour shirt. Is this a, like an. It's 25 bucks. I mean, they're all 25 bucks. Cool. Too much. Uh, is if this I a catch anyone only, only or is this a staple? This is an evergreen. This is an evergreen. Okay, so there's no rush to get this. It's, it'll be there when you're ready. Jenny, are you getting tired? Because it seems like your head is getting lower and lower. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. I, I think it's very. This is clearly not a professional operation. Somebody asked who was sniffling. You know that I have this cold. I'm a little tired. No one said this was a professional operation. That's. No. So, by the way, if I catch anyone in the wild wearing Y Files uh, gear on, they they get a, a gift certificate. So wear that gear and and look for me because I'm out there, Vegas, LA, everywhere. If I catch someone wearing my shirt. They're going to get a $100 gift certificate. So you're just out there, just out there roaming the streets looking for Wi Fi merch? I'll, I'll be out there this this uh, weekend. I'll be at uh, Skank Fest in uh, Las Vegas. All right. Mountains, you know. Gene will be at Skank Fest. He'll be at Yuck Yucks in Newark uh, Saturday and Sunday, two shows on Sunday. And uh, then he'll be at, the, at, at Mr. Laffin's in downtown uh, through the week. So you can go to. Uh, so you go to genostoryhour.com for tickets. All right. Well, there they go. You guys take a quick break. Low Earth orbit is between 99 miles and 1,200 miles away. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough, NASA. What do you got? Miles away. The moon is claimed to be 238,000 miles away. That's a big difference. Yes. This is the spacecraft that's going to take humans to explore uh, the solar system. It's the next big step for NASA in exploration. Called the Orion Multipurpose Crew but, Vehicle, or MPCV, this next generation spacecraft will enable America to explore beyond low Earth orbit. The plan that NASA has but, is to build a, a rocket, rocket called SLS, SLS which is a heavy lift rocket. It's, it's something that is that is much bigger than what we have today. And, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to be to destinations beyond. How's that? Did that fix the echo? On Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. And we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. The moon, Mars, the moon, the moon, the moon. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on space station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. Our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. A set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. It was all recorded on the... Still getting reverb. Yeah, I know you you saying that it was my mic, but I had my mic muted. It's going to be audio routing because we had some issues today with echo, echo, echo. Casey, I know it's annoying. <laughs> I, I, I see it, Tom. I see it, Tom.
All right, let me, I'll give it one more try. And if we're still echoing, then that just means we get a, a bit of an early night, which I think is going to be okay. That'll be okay, right? Have an early night? That'll be okay. These telemetry tapes. So where is this hard evidence? I haven't uh, seen anything that indicates the telemetry data is even in existence. And as I said, even if we had it, we don't have the machines to play it back. But, but your, you, your own research has shown the telemetry data is missing. That's, that's right. Could this be true? Mankind's first interplanetary exploration and the original science data is missing? If it's anywhere, it should be here at NASA's Goddard Space Center in Maryland home to the National Space Science Data Archives. This film you're making now, what is it? This is, um, this is a film trying to prove that Apollo 11 happened. Uh, does it have a name? I mean, do you have, you have a name for it? No, Matt, it's not, it wasn't my mic. I'm, I was muted. Uh, I just switched routing. See how the, tell me if this works. But yet, or you? Calling it, did we go? Did we go, okay, okay. Doesn't have it either. The Smithsonian right. doesn't have it. Right. Johnson doesn't right. have it. Right. Right. We we. All right. Now I'm back, unmuted, and so echoes fixed, and we're good. All right. Awesome. You've been unable to 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 track it down. I mean, we don't know uh, where this this telemetry data ended up, and we don't know the what what path it may have taken. So. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't really give you much of a clue as to as to where this data ended up and whether it, it still exists or not. I don't know why that's not the biggest scandal of the century. Is that the data is missing? The tapes are missing. Well, we don't have the technology. I, I honestly don't. Not being cute or funny, I don't know why that's not a huge scandal. Why there's not outrage over that. Uh, but there is a context warning from YouTube, so. So there's that. Okay. Look at this. Okay. So now we've got two pictures of Jupiter many years apart. Take a look at this. Those are two images provided from NASA of Jupiter. Here's the problem again, 2016, 2014. What's the difference here? What the difference is they added the supposed auroras on the north this is nothing but a Christmas tree. Give me a break. Take a look here. I mean, all the clouds are in the same exact position. Just the 2016 image is a bit, I would say, darker. It's a bit lighter in 2014. Here's a side by side. People can't see what's taking place here with NASA. Nothing more than fake. I mean, give me a break. This is physical. Now, NASA said that the, the clouds on Jupiter just move so super slowly. So that's why they don't change. But if you look at these pictures, they are identical. Like there's every tiny dot. Wait, so dot. You have a brain in your head. You live in a stationary ball with moving clouds? Okay. There's that one. A spinning ball with stationary. Oh, well, I thought it was. So I keep digging a little bit deeper. All right, we covered this in the in the in the Mars video, where we showed how they're how they're faking the color. And I finally get underneath this cloud cover here, and a few images. Pop up. Nice. Oh, images. What are they? Oh, this is what you got, which I'm sure that looks familiar to you, right? Looks just like the pictures they give us of Mars. So I'm just kind of creeping around here and definitely noticing the same kind of undulation changes, and same kind of rock, same kind of dirt. The only thing that's missing is that nice little red tint that they paint. I mean, these. this is exactly what Mars looks like, right? Pay somebody $150,000 a year to put on there. Um... Who's orange hummer, hummer is this? Okay, that looks like a NASA system. Well, let's dig a little further because I can't really see anything on here other than it certainly looks like a NASA symbol. 
and I can't read that. Try camera setup, tents, ATVs, food. I've been there a while. Craft it's service. not a one day trip. With your antenna set up, out in the middle of nowhere in Greenland. Another ATV, a left wing, a level equipment. And remember, we have that picture from Mars that it looks like there's a like a little rodent behind the rocks that that the official word is, oh, that's just rocks that happen to look like a rodent. But it's a specific rodent that's specific to this part of Greenland. All right, I'm just scrubbing to a couple of good ones. All right. Uh, okay, so the pics of Earth are fake. I bet you're going to tell me that they film their videos in Hollywood next. In, in reading too much, but I've since grown out of that and I enjoy reading now. And I played a lot of sports. So, and all of that happened in a little town called York, Maine, across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. Across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. Across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. <laughs> I mean, at least they're trying to make her hair look real, but I, is that what it... Whenever they show women with long hair in space, it always goes just straight up. Not out. <laughs> Next up is from live from quote-unquote space. This is crazy. And let's enlist the help of a friend. Tax. You might know her. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't figure out by now, I'm going to be the first man to actually tell you this, that teleportation is officially real. We are live in the ISS, and let's go back and relook at that clip again. You see? Now watch. Oh, wait, wait, wait. See? This, ladies and gentlemen, what is this? should let you know that this is only done through the usage of chroma key. This is chroma key technology. This is green screen or blue screen technology. That's what is being utilized here. This is simply virtual reality that is actually being fed to you. And you're taking this virtual reality, making it the reality. When in fact, all this is, is simply just virtual CGI, computer generated images. That are so you decide for yourself. If we have the technology to build the space station and have people go and live in the space station for months and months at a time and they are there constantly reporting back to earth Look at this. the things that they are finding there this, I was like, what, then what, the question what, what is why go through all this okay. trouble as far as faking the space station itself why go through the trouble of faking these people in space who are away. supposed to be the astronauts who are he in space out. and have their arms disappear from the screen just like that he why out. have that why go through all that trouble so this video is an astronaut explaining the mission. It's not like practice footage or anything. Watch closely. The arrangement are uh, Dan sat in the pilot seat during this operation, uh, sort of monitoring the uh, motion of the vehicle, making sure that it was steady and that the, uh, the you know there were very few uh, vibrations of any sort. This is a picture of the insat. Uh, actually being deployed from the uh, spacecraft you can see that the, the deploy went very smoothly at the moment did you see it in the background there was a guy in the background man <laughs> i'm not kidding you you can't deny that that's someone in the background there is a guy moving in the background it is here watch it again watch it closely I looked up or I tried to look up the size of this rocket. I found this picture. You can see it's massive. So if that rocket is in space and if there is a guy in the background in that footage, that means that there are it's like model? giants, like insane big giants floating no. around in space looking at NASA. That's, pretty, that's probably why they don't dare to go back to the moon and why they hide so much stuff. Delzi, you could be right. It could be a reflection. There's, we covered that. Uh, this is just someone's video. Uh, I'm, I can't take credit for the, the music or the commentary.
Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be doing that. Look, you could and say that is flying at seventeen thousand miles per hour, two hundred miles. You could say air. vibration does some of that, but okay, I'm out. Whoop, whoop. If the spacesuit fails, the difference in pressure will kill him instantly. And this could be a serious problem because you don't want your stop motion toy to die in space. As white floats in space, a glove drifts out of the capsule. Oh, so a garden glove floating off makes it real? You're telling me there's an astronaut in space with no glove and a bare hand exposed? And what blew it away? The wind? Today, those pictures are... are, are so the wind. They're still overpowering today to realize, number one, it's been done, and that we did it. It blew me away. How easy it was to deceive everyone it was quite easy actually we all know nasa uses wires and sometimes we'll catch them like this here the guy pulled on his wire however some days when you're filming live things just don't work out and it becomes so blatantly <laughs> obvious it's ridiculous so in this clip they're talking live feed and what you know we have a Astronaut go by us in the background, uh, obviously trying to give it a more realistic, spacey, station, busy effect. The only problem is the camera that was supposed to mask this harness out or the uh, video feed is not working. And so we see the guy come flying along in a harness on his wires. Pretty amazing. But that's not all that goes wrong here. channel in 3d space it's virtual reality he's they're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3d objects now in this scene the guy on the left in the green shirt he thinks he sees an object in 3d space is being broadcast to him so he grabs it and he puts it off to the side he's looking straight ahead because he's looking at an object rotating in front of him but the video channel is down that is supposed to show what the viewers the, what we're supposed to see. There. And so we don't actually get to see the object that he has seen. And I would just sum this up as a very terrible, bad, horrible day. Yeah, the augmented contact lenses, uh, I, I don't buy it either. But, you know, if it's green, and I'm not, I'm not even sure it's green screen, but this astronaut is definitely looks like he's manipulating something. For NASA doing live feeds, uh, as much fun as this was, there is a time coming when you and I will not be able to tell the difference. This is real people shooting rockets straight up with camera. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Five, four, Best, best hobby ever. <laughs> How awesome. Because of the firmament, Zarin.
Yeah, someone send this send this to, to Joe Rogan. Is Ryan J. There comes the firmament. And look, I'm not a flat earther. I'm not. But I have to admit, I enjoy the videos. I, I really enjoy them. Uh, hard to find these on YouTube. That looks like Admiral Byrd. So, NASA is fake. Big deal. How does this affect me? Blah, blah, blah. Or you're thinking, no, no, there's no way my heroes could be lying to me there's no way that this whole world is in on this big scam this is just too much and that's what i would have thought too but here is what they are hiding and why nasa formed in the first place pay attention that is bird you've been to both the north pole and the south pole is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young americans uh yes there is and not up around the North Pole, because it's getting crowded up there now, because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States. So this is Admiral Byrd, who allegedly went into the, into the inner Earth. That's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. Well, that's a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left down at the bottom of the world. A number of expeditions that will follow, I think, uh, year after year, the bottom of the world, because the government has really become interested. I tell you one reason they're interested. It's by far the most uh, valuable, important place left in the world for science. That's why the scientific groups all over the nation are really interested. But more important than that, it's, uh, it has to do with the future uh, of the nation, those to come after us, or even uh, during your lifetime. Because it happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. You know, as the world shrinks with an ever-increasing acceleration. All right, I think this, this video might be implying flat Earth, which I don't believe. But um, there is some weird stuff going down in Antarctica. And we should probably cover that on another After Files. Um, I always forget the guy's name, the scientist who works down there. He's got a crazy website and a lot of, a lot of stories. Uh, the things that the government is doing down there, like artificial earthquakes and weather manipulation. And look, I don't, I don't believe a lot of it, but I'm, I'm really entertained by it. The NASA, the, the NASA like image manipulation, can't deny that. Some of the astronaut stuff, you know, if these, this people are saying that this, this guy's in a harness. But in NASA's defense, that's that would be hard to do with Meyer. That would be hard to do with Meyer. Right? Wires would be there. That'd be hard to do. But some of them are undeniable. Thing that is that is much bigger than what we have today and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, be, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building 
is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to, and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. The moon, moon Mars, the moon. Eventually, we'll be able to get there. All right, there's just a couple of those. Um, I'll drop, if you want to see the whole video, I'll drop it in the chat. A lot of it is, is, is wacky conspiracy stuff, but some of it's really interesting. If you want to go down a rabbit hole. All right, we'll do a couple of super chats, and then we can get you guys out of here. Can't, you, you can't be here all night. MX can't pass the Van Halen belts. You can't. You can't pass the Van Halen belts. Uh, watch out for those cords and wires sticking out. Yep. Stuff on the floor behind them isn't floating. No, but they say that's all tied down. But you can see, uh, like, you can see, like, the paper's moving, but that could just be, you know, the ventilation. But the moon, the moon. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on space station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. Our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. A set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. But they, there's a lot of explaining to do there. Uh, Mark Snappy Lehman for 10. Did the Plum Island cows have hoofs because, because they lack toes? <laughs> Funny stuff. I don't know what Gino's pointing at. The chat. I put the mouth in the uh, private chat. Oh. In space. And you, you want that we should look at this mouse? I mean, he's just hanging out in space uh, in supposedly on SpaceX in space breathing and running around like it's nothing, then might breathe with no air. Uh, you might want to let it play for, for the first nine seconds uh, of the commercial it's going to show you. No. So, like, for the guy that looked like he was taking something and moving it, it's just like what weathermen do like they're standing in front of a green screen but they're looking right. at a monitor i was doing the same thing gino can you try this on your computer my i my i've got pop-up blockers and ad blockers i think i'm it's screwing this thing up okay did that put me up that did put me up okay so let's see here. the financial times okay Five minutes. All right, so what we're gonna what we're looking at is what a, a mouse in space. Yeah. Well, no. I gotta redo it. I gotta redo it. I'll be back in one second. That's it. It's Autumn reader spread spread them in for ten. Hola. Patreon member and first time super chatter. Something extra for the tip chart tonight. Thanks for another amazing episode. It's one on my faves list. Well, thanks, Autumn. Thanks for joining Patreon. We appreciate that. Soul Keith. Pigs in space. space, space, space. Aaron, uh, for you youngsters, that's from the, the Muppet Show. Aaron Sobier for nine ninety nine. Have you done anything on Flat Earth yet? If not soon, uh, probably not, Aaron, because YouTube hates those videos and, and and would label us a conspiracy channel. I direct people to Dr. Dave, who does a lot of debunking of the Flat Earth, and he's entertaining because he gets so emotional about it. Like I watch them, and I'm like, "All right, Dave, I know you hate it, but just you know, you want to chill." So I send people there. I'm going to try and figure out a way to do it, but I am trying to avoid the wrath of the algorithm. You got your mouth mouse there, Gino? Yep, he's running around right there. Uh, it'll zoom in a little uh, in a minute, but on the left image, he's like running around the, the ring of the engine. Uh, so we're going to do a zoom in here. Yep, here what? he is. Just hanging out. Oh, what, what, what am I looking at? Uh, right. <laughs> 
It was right on like the collar of that. Yeah, let's see here. <laughs> uh, they won't let me replay. Sorry, add time. Well, Jacob W., thank you for the 1999. I had a dangler yesterday, unsightly, unseemly, but not unscented. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, 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 my spleen. Oh, you're going to rupture my spleen. <laughs> they, they were, sorry, they won't let me replay it. Here's Ginsburg's worms. The more I read, the more confused I feel. I'm a, so that's one of those websites that, you, that gives you one play and peace out. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm back again now. So we'll see. I guess we got to just keep giving uh, these guys a free commercial here. <laughs> itself. I'm wondering if you ever feel the same way. The more answers I get, the more questions I have. I feel the same way, Ginsburg's Worms, especially researching these episodes. Are, some of them are very upsetting. All right, what am I looking at? So around the ring, see moving on the left, uh, around the ring there, he's just chilling out right there. Yeah, I don't um, see it. Uh, all right, they're going to zoom in, and right in the middle of the, of the screen, right indicate with your mouse, that, right there. I, can you see? Yeah. It? Does, uh, does my mouse show? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was a, it was a little mouse walked across there. It was a creature. Some creature. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're supposed to be in space, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So no matter what be too long in space for it to hold its breath no but it, it but it that's probably just an object coming off the engine or a, a, a ice crystals or some a chunk of something well, you can see it's definitely it five crawls like a mouse or a mouse that's crazy Sorry, I keep playing, but I can't keep giving uh, free ad space to, to whatever company that is. No, we can't do that. And, and, and we can't keep you here all night for those. Gina's, Gina's got things he's got to do. Ginsburg's worm, I feel the same way. Uh, you know, the Y files will give you some uh, some entertaining content, not the uh, files, but the episodes are could be entertaining, they're fun, but sometimes you will come away from a Y files episode with just this feeling of existential dread. I'm sorry about that, but some things are important. Like tonight's episode is important. Chris Nolan, thank you for the 10 Australia. And I live in Victoria. They suggested getting a vaccine for Japanese encephalitis vaccine as it has started spreading here. I wonder if it's a virus that got out. I mean, I, I start to think about everything that suddenly appears. Suddenly it appears. Maybe there are things we just shouldn't be messing with. But they'll tell you that we're researching these so we can learn how to fight fight it if it gets out. But you're the one letting it out. A TX130666, $5. Hi, AJ. I hope you're working on an episode dedicated to the structures on the moon. Maybe they're nothing, but some of them sure look artificial. Yep, we're working on that episode right now. It's coming. I know I say it's on the list, and I mean that they're on the list, but the moon base episode is coming very shortly. Yes. Team's getting tired. Team's getting tired, but we're, we're, we're wrapping it up for you. There's Charlie Scholes. I get pretty freaky. He's a super freak. The kind of fish you dream about. You got freaky dreams. I get pretty kinky. He's a super freak. But only if you pay me. Gotta pay the fish. <laughs> I need a tip. I need a tip. I need a tip from you. And you. And you, human. You and you and you. Hit the, hit the, hit the. Hit the super chat, super chat. Hit the button now. Charlie would love to help making a mobile app slash game, especially if it includes Hecklefish. Love your brand. Not looking for a job, just an adventure. No hard feelings if you have no time. I have no time, Charlie, but if you if you want to pitch an idea, you, you could definitely email us. Um, we talked to a, a mobile development company just last week who wants to do something similar. Um, we haven't decided on anything, but I love the idea. 
I think it's a great idea. It'd be a lot of fun. Uh, Envoy, thank you for the 1999. 10,000 people checked their ears for ticks because of your story. Another great episode. Wild Files team, keep it up. Yeah, I was itchy editing uh, that scene. Especially that footage in there of, of the doctor pulling the tick off of that little boy's neck. That was... And you know... You know how Jen loves the gross videos, pimple poppers and stuff? That is a, that is a genre of videos also very popular on YouTube or tick removal videos. Now, does that scratch yeah. the same itch for you? I'm sorry, I, I interrupted your dinner. I'm apolo I apologize. Uh, no, that grosses me out, but they if have to learn how to do a professional live stream, watch something else. This ain't it. They have people that get they're they're called jiggers they're like worms that get into your feet and your hands they're like larva and there's removal videos where they they dig them out bot flies you, and you watch those i have watched those they're really gross though like they're really gross they make they make my skin crawl Duh. so Whenever I meet somebody and I feel yeah. connected to them, I respect that feeling. No. No. But it's really bad in like certain third world countries. Like people will have hundreds of them in their feet and their hands. And you have, I mean. I just, I'm just putting this up, that up there as like a palate cleanser. <laughs> Victoria's face. You, you, you don't like the jigger removals, Victoria? No, that's uh, correct. Jiggers, yeah. we, we did had them growing up, and we'd put uh, fingernail polish on them, clear fingernail polish, and they'd die. All right. There, there's the, the daily jigger hack from Victoria. <laughs> so that's, that's, why you, that's why you come here, your daily jigger hack. Uh, Casey Lyons just wanted to give my husband a belated birthday shout out. It was last Thursday. We look forward to watching every week. And our almost one year old George jumps and dances in his, in his crib every time he sees Hecklefish. Well, happy birthday to Mr. Lyons. And George is adorable. I hope that George has a Heckle Guppy shirt. And if he does, send me a, send me a picture. Bugaboo, thank you for the 1999. Got you, got you. Lux Lethal is there for 20 men. This is my wife's account. <laughs> but you're on your wife's account? Uh, Jen and I don't share accounts. She doesn't need to see my browsing history, and I don't need to see hers. Uh, this Man, this is my wife's account, but we love you. I was at the Embassy Bahamas, and our U.S. doctor told me straight-up ticks didn't cause a problem. My dogs kept getting tons, and I wanted our house sprayed. Never trust the DOS. Nope. Nope, Department of State. Never trust. Chris Nolan, every time I watch the White House videos, I watch your hand gestures at the end. I wonder if there's any meaning to them. Keep up the great work. Yeah, it's people think it's like a an Illuminati thing or the Masons. It's the Shaolin, it's the Shaolin salute, is what that is. Um, that's it's sort of just the end of it, because Kempo has been a big part of my life. So that that's all that is. It's, there's nothing secret to that one. Cards 96 is thought provoking episode. I hope so. Dickerson designs a shekel for my heckle for at last you have arrived. Your plushy poised upon my beds, a thrill. I can't deny from tinfoil hat to tip of fin perfection realized my only wish would be that if you were in fact alive kisses. I love that. You loved it. Yeah, that was great. You go ahead and recite it. No. There's Dr. Venkman. Great show as if I didn't hate bugs bites already. Just wondering, is Gino smoking a joint in the intro? Asking for a friend. Party on. That... <laughs> um, if kids are watching, he's not smoking a marijuana cigarette. But if there are no kids watching, he definitely was token on a doobie. There's Vince 65742. Sorry, cheap coffees for everyone. That's okay. 
I prefer cheap coffees. I heart space panda. What is AJ's level of involvement in the UFO slash UAP community? I'm a new, but I love this channel. Um, I'm not involved really at all. High heart pandas. I, I think UFOs and UAPs are fun. And if I find a fun story to tell you, I tell it, but I'm not, I'm not like involved in UFO Twitter or anything. I don't know much about the stuff. I just, I, I got to get the next one queued up. All right, we got it. There's Heather for nine ninety nine. Do a plug for Wi Fi's Patreon. Love you guys. Heart, keep up the great work. I pinned the comment. I pinned the Patreon link up in the up there if you'd like to support. It's a great way to support. Danielle, five Canadian, uh, consistent supporter. Good to see you in the chat. There's a BSL four lab within a mile of downtown Winnipeg, in Canada. Population eight hundred thousand. Yeah, you'd think that after what's happened the last two two years, we would be talking more about this stuff. But I guess I guess we're fine. I guess nobody cares. I mean, we care. It's Will Ditto, fifty bucks. That's me in the fishbowl. That's me on the U to begging you for money. I need to buy a little more booze and I don't know if I can do it. Oh no, I need <laughs> 10 bucks. I haven't got enough. Will ask, gotta, gotta get my specs tinted like those that they help with screen strain. A hundred percent, Will. I struggled doing the stream um, before these I mean, clearly I'm struggling still, but my eyes, I struggled with the bright lights. So I definitely recommend them. Amber tinted. And these have a little bit of a magnification so I can, I can read the words. Uh, Keenan Key. Hey, Jen Co. we love this show. Have you ever considered doing an episode on the Shroud of Turin or religious artifacts in general? Yes, it's coming up in a few weeks. Two, three weeks. Two, three weeks? Yeah, we Is haven't quite decided. Yeah. it. The shrouds on there. The shrouds in there, yeah. What other artifacts can you recall from memory? Uh, the Grail is in there. Grail, um, uh, Spear of Destiny. Spear of Destiny. I don't know. I don't know. There's a bunch of Bible artifacts. Well, I'll make sure the Spear of Destiny is in there. That's the spear that pierced Jesus when he was on the on the cross. So, Keenan, that's coming up. Surf Town for 10. Have you ever thought about doing a video on DMT deities? The Jester is one that gets mentioned a lot. Is there good and evil? Love the channel. Hollow Moon is my favorite. More Moon videos. Well, welcome. Thanks. More Moon videos are coming, Surf Town. I'm trying to figure out a way to do a DMT video from a, a scientific slash spiritual perspective. The challenge is running into the algorithm because DMT would get flagged by YouTube as promoting illegal uh, drug use. So I have to be careful with that. But the deities would be something I would cover because everyone tends to see the same things. Um, I didn't see any deities, but I didn't break through that far. I just saw a lot of fractals. But great suggestion. Here's Patriot Lady Biker. I heard the October 4th emergency broadcast system they're pinging our phones with is just a new way for the government to track everyone in the U.S., I'm putting mine in a Faraday bag that day. That's a great idea. I'm going to leave myself a note to Faraday mine as well. I mean, you know, they, they're tracking us. You know, you know, they're tracking us. Didn't James Clapper just get hired to do something else just like this past week? He's the, he, he's the, the, the former... Uh, Intelligence director who lied about the NSA spying on American citizens. I guess it's fine. I guess he's not in jail. Self-indulged. Thank you for the 50. Love the work you all do. I'm looking forward to what comes next. Well, stick around. As long as you keep watching, we'll keep doing it. Jason says, AJ, my wife says my dangler is a spear of destiny. I hear Jen cackling from down the hall. That's a good one. Huh. 
I'll have to remember yeah, that one. One, one of our mods d deleted it, but that's because <laughs> that's because I only read the first part. I didn't read the I, right. I read uh -oh. I read the funny part. I stopped when it got a little aggressive. Okay. But a uh, little comedy lesson for Jason there. My gallon for five says hi, Victoria. Winky. No feet for you, Mike. Not for five dollars. She only does feet for ten. Largo Room Studios for twenty. Isn't a dangler the same as a clinger or a dingleberry? That's what. That's kind of what it sounds like. Uh, Nank Thibodeau for forty nine ninety nine. I'm not sure how super chats work. It works just fine, just like that. Sorry if you see this twice. No, you could you could throw as many fifties in there as you need to do to get it done. I'd love to hear your take on the alleged ET mummies the Mexican government is talking about in an upcoming episode. Uh, maybe we'll talk about those in the next After Files because there's a lot of stuff going on with those mummies, and I I think it's I think it's all kind of a scam. But we could talk about that next week. Mark Contrite for two hundred dollars. Oh my goodness! You like this show? Send me some dough. You can super chat. I hope <laughs> you a bad snatch. There is one thing that I am sure of. You gotta tip me some more, human. Won't you tip me with some money? Hey, hey, fishy. Fishy, fishy. Don't you know you gotta tip the fishy? Hey, hey, tip the fishy. Tip the fishy tonight. Thanks for that. Great support, Mark. Your Zatara set. I'm sorry, Gino. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. The Discord dances along during those. Watching you guys. That's so fun. Sitara 74 I love your stories, Gino. Heart, 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 Alex. Slide into the DMs. Give me a, a, a recommendation for... <laughs> DMs. Jacob, the OK, 1999. Imagine being the HR rep at a government lab. <laughs> we here at the CIA appreciate the team's hard work on the AIDS virus, so we decided we'll have a potluck this Friday at lunch. Sheila has the sign-up sheet. Very nice, Jacob. Chris Hare. Stay gold, pony boy. Stay gold. Philly Bird Law for five. So what percentage of truth do we really think NASA and or the government tells us? Very small. Very small percentage, Philly Bird. Mandy Bell, thank you for answering my question about the slippers. Do you believe that dinosaurs were real? I love Gino's story time. Always interesting. It gets me thinking. I learned so much watching your channel. Dinosaurs were real. They were real. I know Gino says no, but I can't put him up toward the end of the show because he'll try to make his case. Won't you, Gino? Yeah. Dinosaurs are real. No one's ever found a dinosaur bone. No one's ever found a dinosaur bone. That is true. There's Neil Bashore. Thank you for the 50. I appreciate that. Visitor for two, uh, do we have a video coming up about CERN? No, I don't think there's anything specific coming up about CERN. But they, they pop up in a lot of episodes. We, uh, we covered the colliders, the particle colliders, quite a bit in the Many Worlds episode. So, I mean, that's kind of how I cover CERN. To just do straight up CERN would be just a... A lot of what they do is not super, super exciting or in interesting. I think caught her with the biggest yawn you've ever seen. Chris's collectibles for five. Hecklefishes, so family-friendly. How long until we get a family-friendly conspiracy theory episode? Thank you. Um, I, I, I try to keep things as family-friendly as I can. You know, sometimes you can't. Like tonight's episode, I don't know how much the kids are going to love it. But I do my best to make it so at least, you know, 13 and above. 
Enjoy the enjoy the show. Paul for 50. I just noted noticed someone out donated me on Patreon in September. Congrats to the Y Files on the success and Sean for being such a mensch. Um, you were out donated in, in September, Paul. That's true, but October is just around the corner. Trip Romley, 999. Hey, AJ, I wanted to say that your channel is the only one I don't skip, don't skip advertisements on. The Heckle content is enjoyed and appreciated, and I thought you might appreciate hearing it. I do, Trip. I really love to hear that because I work hard on those uh, ads. So does Jennifer, don't you? I do. I work hard on those ads. You do. Oh, thank you, Trip. I'm, I'm glad that you noticed and appreciate it. I try to make them entertaining so you're not just sitting through the most boring thing ever. So we're just a little bit after 10 p.m. I think that's going to do her. All right, Victoria, thank you so much. And there she goes, taking her, her feet with her. Gino, great story hour tonight. His peace out. Jennifer, thank you for, for covering for me when I made my Philosopher's Stone. I've been working on that. You're quite welcome. Bye, everybody. No, I'm, I'm going to show it to you later. Thanks. Thanks to everyone who sent in super chats tonight. If I didn't get to you, I apologize. But just look at it this way. You're supporting the channel, right? That's what's important. But but I think I got to just about everybody. Um, Iggs, maybe best ads on YouTube. I'm glad, glad you think so. Um, so thanks to everyone for super chatted. We couldn't do this without you. Again, shop at thewifiles.com for merch. That helps us out. Patreon is the best way to support. The link is pinned up there. And uh, we'll see you next week. Heck official, see you out. The end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I swam down each, each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way I've loved, I've laughed and cried I've had my fill my share of losing and now as tears subside I find it all it's all so amusing to think I did all that and may I say not in a shy way Oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way, for what is a fish, what has he got, if not himself, then he has not, to say the fish. Heckelfish. And you know what? I did it. My.